This is the Nexus Special, Episode 57, New Year's Special 2017, on Saturday, January 6th, 2018. And now, the Decade of Blockchain, and Happy New Year! This Nexus Special is hosted by Ian R. Buck, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. For the show notes for this episode, visit thenexus.tv slash ns57. Hey, Nexus Special. Yo. Hey. It's, it's us again. We're back. From some year in the past. I mean, that's not really something that you can say, though, because the, I don't remember the last time that the three of us specifically were on a Nexus Special. I being... Nexus Special, I don't know. I, I'm sure... We, I was in the studio with the three of you, like, only a month ago. That was an extra dimension. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm Ian Buck. Ian R. Buck. I'm Brian S. Mitchell. <laughs> I've never gone by that. Just I'm Brian Mitchell. Or Brian Mitch L. If you're looking for me on Twitter. <laughs> I'm Ryan Rampersad. Yay. And we just survived 2017. We did it. Uh, so what went into 2017? What did, what did we get out of it? We're about to talk about all of the biggest things that happened in the tech world, yeah? That we could think about. That we could, yeah, and exactly. Remember. <laughs> I'm sure we're missing quite a lot of things. Oh, yeah. This, so when we were making this list, I realized that we're probably listing a lot of things that happened later in the year because that's what we can remember, and we probably missed a lot of stuff. Like, I don't even remember what happened CES a year ago. Yeah, but so my perspective on that is if I don't remember now, it probably wasn't that important. Yeah. Actually, what I remember about CES was that I did have a friend, Snuffy, who went to CES, and I was like, oh, we should like send you with a microphone, and then you can... Uh, uh, and then I forgot. You know, yeah. We, yeah. we didn't follow up That's at all. That's how it goes. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, we used to make like fake episodes where we pretended that we were at CES. Yeah, you uh, bet. And, you did? Yeah. And oh. now we, and we even had like a whole intro with like there is... car noises in the background, and we were like trying to find a place to park. It was awesome. There were other episodes where I went to the Microsoft booth to mm-hmm. get lunch, but mm-hmm. there was actually no Microsoft booth that year, <laughs> which is part of the joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, we, we embellished a little bit. I stole Matt's plane ticket, I think, you one did. time. Yeah, yeah. It was wow. great. <laughs> he was 15 Drake. minutes late. I had to send somebody. You know, back when <laughs> back when this network was actually fun and, you know, not serious. Wait a second. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a more fun episode. If anybody is listening to this and then wants to have a good time, go listen to the Associated Fringe episode. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's pretty excellent. Oh, man. So the big major news pieces that we could remember from 2017 in the tech world. Uh, let's start with uh, a, a bummer, I guess. Net neutrality. These aren't in order, by the way, either, right? No, not in chronological order. Not in any order. <laughs> it's just whatever we thought of. <laughs> pretty much. So, womp womp, net neutrality, going away. Defeated again. Mm-hmm. And that was pretty recent. That was mm-hmm. December. Yes. So Yeah, so the timeline of things that happened in 2017 with net neutrality was, of course... Donald Trump was inaugurated in Jul- in January and immediately, you know, appointed a new head of the FCC, Ajit Pai, and he had already been talking about how much he disliked net neutrality and he was going to get rid of all the rules and yada yada yada. And so <clears throat> we knew that this was coming for quite a while. They had they they proposed the rule changes in the summer and there was like a i think it was a six week uh public comment period where you know all of us normal people could go and voice our opinions on net neutrality you know whether we view isps as like just um utilities or as you know like a luxury item or you know whatever um and that ended in mid july mid-august somewhere in there and during that time the russians came in and submitted oh my god <laughs> hundreds of thousands or even millions of fake comments yeah. all with random americans including like barack obama was in there <laughs> yeah. people's dead relatives were in there mm-hmm. yeah and so they've pretty much just said we're not going to th- consider the comments at all even though i think someone did a survey on or looked at some of it and of all the comments 90 percent of them or like 99 pretty much everyone was in support of net neutrality yeah yep and the they voted on it in mid December, December fourteenth, I believe. And um, right. yeah, and I, I I know these dates because I was teaching my computer tech one students about this, and and you know gave them updates throughout the semester as things were happening. And yeah, they predictably voted along party party lines, uh, three to two, to repeal the uh, net neutrality rules, going back from Title Two classification uh, to the. Um, um it uh, what is it 
information information services i think instead of instead of telecommunication services right yep. yeah yeah yep. And uh, if you want to learn a whole lot more about net neutrality, we have an entire Extra Dimension episode about net neutrality, which I need to go and update now that we have more information since, you know, so sad. new news has happened. So new that's, news. That's TED 22. Yes. The Extra Dimension number 22. Link in the show notes, by the way. Yeah. Yep. Any, any other thoughts on net neutrality? So my perspective on this is it's said that it's gone. But there's a potential in the future for better implementations of net neutrality. Right. Yeah, as it currently stands, it's definitely going to be a thing that like flip-flops basically every time that we get a new president. Because the the party alignment of the FCC board flip-flops. Which is supposed to not be on party lines, but... You know how it is. <laughs> yeah. You know how so, it is. so I think there's some other things about it just too. Like so judges. it's possible that it could be just a thing that both parties eventually ignore again. It, it's possible. We don't know. Yeah. Um, it's possible that um, it could go, it could its implementation could move to a new regulatory body. Um, so what I'm hoping is going to happen is at some point we'll actually have a Congress that can create some laws around net neutrality modern that good yeah laws. that's actually going to you know supersede what the fcc can do right and i'd yeah. be okay with that i'd also um be a pretty big large pretty uh multi-massive conglomerate fan of breaking up some companies like right uh, pretty mm-hmm. big antitrust fan here yeah 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 um slash we could go back to like the approach uh from from back in the days of dial-up internet where you had line sharing requirements right right? um and and we could expand those line sharing requirements to broadband as well Um, so i got a good question so uh when uh at&t was broken up okay they called the split up companies the baby bells Mm -hmm. what do we call the baby comcasts um uh, little finities <laughs> <laughs> okay then <laughs> that's the best i got for you on x finities <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh good one did you hear that the fcc recently uh proposed wanting to classify any internet access that's at least 10 meg down one up as broadband so including cellular yep so like random hmm. 4g 3G coverage in the middle of nowhere would count as broadband, and they could say check, and then no one would ever have to build internet service there. <laughs> Ugh. That would, uh. Anyway, but that's 2018 news. Yeah, we'll cover that next year. All right, so we just we just covered one bullet point of like 20 or 30 that we have here. So okay, we'll get going. We're making good progress. So Apple relents. Uh, they they had a roundtable thing last spring or summer or something where some people were invited to, and they said, "All right." Uh, Mac Pro isn't great. We are making an iMac Pro, but since everyone's complaining, we're going to also make a Mac Pro later in 2018. Um, and then the iMac Pro came out, and we'll talk about that later. And it was a big admission of a gap in their lineup. And they... Yeah. And, and a... Very rarely does Apple ever put themselves in a disadvantageous... You tell me if that's the right word. Uh, situation in a PR stance. Okay. Um, and yeah. this is one of the very rare times they did that. And I think it worked for the most part. Yeah, and they basically admitted that um, the the Mac Pro was designed around GPUs and and application scaling for increased GPU performance, but it's really CPU bound still. So they yeah. didn't have any really thermal headroom to put more beefy CPUs. And it was also you know um, boxed into a corner in a trash can. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so did they also talk about how, that like is there approach next time going to be centered around like thunderbolt expansion again we or are they going to they have... said the mac pro will be uh more modular okay good like, well we don't know did they say upgradable maybe they maybe just said modular they said modular but we don't know what modular means to apple that's true does that mean a socketed cpu or i mean like the imac pro has a socketed cpu and uh socketed ram but that's both only you can you they say you can't change the CPU and the RAM you have to go to an authorized person for. Mm. So, like, modular could mean user accessible or you have to take it in somewhere. Right. Or, or does their be. modular, as, as Ian said, does that just imply that there's 10 Thunderbolt 3 ports somehow? Yeah. We, don't, we just don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like they're going to go more like a cheese grater because the cheese grater Mac Pro. Because the, the, the trash can Mac Pro is so much, you can't change much about 
the Mac Pro, and it's all based on Thunderbolt. I just figured out what you mean by cheese grater Mac Pro. <laughs> I love have you that. Heard that before? I have not heard that before. I, like I said before, I'm not steeped in this whole like Apple uh, history yeah. of their I hardware. To ETP and connected and <laughs> and upgrade and yeah, you know, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, the so any listeners who are listening to this, cheese grater mean implying the aluminum uh, grill on the front and back of the Mac, the old Mac Pro design mm-hmm. could almost look like a cheese grater. Yep. Yep. Physically looks like one. Yeah. Uh, I got some Google news to counter that Apple news. Uh, we this year we finally got Android apps running on Chromebooks, like officially. Which is good. It's, it's about time. It's pretty awesome. Now, what yeah. was that thing that Google said didn't say, but everybody rumored about what was that new special operating system andromeda andromeda guess what didn't happen andromeda yes but guess where it kind of ended up in this thing yeah basically so so andromeda was like their hypothetical merger between android and chrome os and it was you know going to be this like holy grail of you know ah the greatest operating systems of all time becoming one or whatever uh, merging our mobile and our desktop environments into into one um <laughs> but really what it is is yeah i i think that bringing android apps to chrome os is like that's that's a, a very good solution to this I agree. problem um and i and i love it because it it allows the user to kind of choose which which experience they want you know so often the creators of of these um these different services will either put more effort more attention into one or the other right Mm -hmm. their website or their mobile app and it's kind of a toss-up on what which one it's going to be depending on which which creator it is um and and so you can choose on these new Chromebooks uh, whether you want to access like the desktop website version or the Android mobile version. Um, and so like my brother, you know, is able to, for example, use Netflix, uh, the Android app, because that allows him mm. to download movies, right? right. Um, which you cannot do on traditional desktop operating systems. Not for technical reasons, of course, but for, you know... Um, business reasons uh and and but then you know he can still use like like google drive the you know website that has Mm -hmm. more features and you know has a better layout and stuff like that yeah so yeah i haven't had the opportunity to experience apps on it or uh, chromebooks yeah one day maybe i might yeah and and of course i do need to sit him down and uh record an actual second opinion about that chromebook um i i did get a hold of it for long enough to download some APKs and try and, you know, install stuff that isn't from the the Play Store. And it told me that I was going to have to put the Chromebook into developer mode in order to install that's cute. random a- APKs. And I was like, that's unfortunate. What, do, what what happens if you're in developer mode? So it, it like, it gives you this big blaring, like warning when you're first starting it up saying like, hey, we, you know, we, we haven't checked to make sure that the kernel is, you know, a hundred percent okay and you know yada yada so you you have to deal with that like every single time that you're turning on the chromebook um but i think other than that pretty much that is unfortunate but that's fine yeah yeah like i would totally do that but i don't think that it's a good it's it's not something that you would want to tell you know your typical user to go and and turn that on right so because that would just freak people out let's talk about blockchain love blockchain i love blockchain what is blockchain (laughs) It's a different episode altogether. Yep. Something about chains and blocks. We'll do an extra dimension about that sometime. Yep. Yeah. But it's uh, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Being used in Everything. rather unconventional areas. It's used in every single thing that you can imagine. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Great. Why, why is that happening in 2017? What is, what is this zeitgeist that's going on so, right now? So there's been a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know the name of the company. Um, some Some kind of food thing. Uh, Long, I- Long, I- Long no. Island Iced Tea oh. or something. They changed their name to Long Blockchain or something. Okay. And, oh, that's and, right. And all and all of their stocks like tripled or quadrupled. Yeah. Or <laughs> they went from Iced Tea to Blockchain. <laughs> so and and then um yeah. and then I don't know the name of the company that owns Hooters, but they also did something with the word blockchain in a PR announcement, and their um, <laughs> you know, like their their mind share spiked for about a week um and there's just there's just this thing yeah because blockchain is so on brand for hooters you know 
um well and so and, and and so then of course you kind of dig deeper and you look at the implementation and you think well what what novel way is is a company like that a restaurant using blockchain to enhance the user experience of eating a meal to which the answer is they're not they're simply tracking um loyalty points in a blockchain which has no advantage whatsoever but they can use the lingo and get their stock to go up exactly so so um there's many companies, large and small, doing that, mm -hmm. um, and and it might have been involved in some loose way with some turkeys somewhere, but we will not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, the implementation of blockchain that I'm used to hearing about is is Bitcoin. Bitcoin. And Bitcoin also had some interesting stuff going on with it this year. And many the, and many other cr cr uh, cryptocurrencies. Yeah, mm -hmm. Bitcoin went up to fifteen grand per coin something huge I, I think it got up to 19 at one point Nin Jeez. um and then and so bitcoin's actually had a really weird year so in the past two months so since the beginning of november you know it shot past ten thousand. it shot past 12 it got up to 13 and 14 and it's like well it's got to peak sometime right and then it sort of peaked out a little bit once it hit 19 it dropped down to about 15 16 um i don't know what it is today but um you know it, it's still very high and it's still sort of uh it's a wow! It's one dollar off of seventeen. It's amazing. Wow. Um, so it's it's really it's a really worthy uh, or well valued coin, but that also brings up a lot of problems. So Bitcoin right now, because the utility for using it is so low now, because it costs so much per coin, mm. the transaction fees are astronomical. So to oh, really? get your transaction to actually go through in a reasonable time, like your transaction will go through in a few hours. Um, maybe a day, you know, if it's <laughs> normally priced, you know, if your transaction's not a big deal. But to get it to go in a few minutes, mm -hmm. you know, in that one hour window, you need to pay a $25 transaction fee. Oh boy. And that's, that's kind of, it kind of makes it useless for a normal person or for a normal transaction. Yeah. Um, but then Bitcoin's had some other weird stuff aside from the huge growth spike. Bitcoin also had a bunch of different forks for various reasons this year. Mm -hmm. So, the block size is what dictates how many transactions, so how many people can all do some action at once okay. per block. And that block size was, you know, some one megabyte worth of space. And it could hold, I don't know how many transactions, let's just say a thousand. Okay. Well, to get more throughput into the system, you need to make the block size bigger. And so then there became block or Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin something else, and then there's more Bitcoin variations all over the place i really have to ask how did they spell cash was it c-a-c-h-e or c-a-s-h uh, the, the normal way that's not helpful ryan <laughs> <laughs> that's the point ian <laughs> so so bitcoin's had a, a wild year and um i would expect bitcoin uh to have a ripple effect mm -hmm. uh in the tangle of cryptocurrency <laughs> okay no, you didn't get it. Okay. No, wait. What? Uh, no, don't worry. I about guess I it. wasn't paying that much attention. That's good. Don't pay attention. It's bad for you. Uh, so Amazon. Yes. And Google. Yes. They don't like each other. No, they never what? have. So weird thing happened earlier this year. Suddenly, all of the Google products, like Google Homes mm -hmm. and Google Chromecasts and googly things like that, disappeared from the Amazon website. I feel like the Chromecasts have never ever been on on Amazon. Though. They were. That's where They're... I bought my first one. Oh really? Oh okay. really? Okay. Huh. Yeah. So this and is... they disappeared, huh. and it was an outrage. And then Good it didn't day. matter. Well, they're cause... back now, right? Well, well, I think that's I a thought good thought question. The, I thought some of the Google stuff came back once. So uh, the Amazon Prime app was released on Apple TV in late December, and uh, Amazon started selling the Apple TV on Amazon. Well, of course. Uh, once that app was released, and I think some Google stuff came back too. Mm -hmm. That's true, it did. Um, and some other strange things happened. Uh, YouTube. Well, I, I would I would like to note that this kind of this feud goes back a little farther than that, though, because I remember in 2014 mm -hmm. when I was trying to like you know watch videos that I had bought through Amazon Video, and I was like, oh wait, the Amazon Video app isn't available in the Google Play Store, right? right? I had to go and download the APK from Amazon directly, and you know, yada yada, jump through the and hoops. that and that that was more of so, in my opinion, and I and I don't know the interior details. That always seemed like a um, a way to get around having the thirty percent markup. 
right? I don't think that applies. It applies to any digital items, I which includes videos. I don't think that applies to Google Apps. Because you can buy whatever you want from any... You can you can download the regular Amazon app and nobody cares. You can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. It's um, stuff through the system way of doing it. So like like Apple in app purchases takes thirty percent, and you know someone could could implement their own in app purchase through PayPal or their own credit card system. Apple would, um, according to their rules, reject that application from the App Store because it's right. not using the built in one. So, but I don't well, think that applies to Android and the Play Store. So I'm not. I'm pretty I, sure. I'm pretty sure it does. And 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 if, and if it did, I don't think Google would say no to somebody who did it. So, but but if it's built in in app purchases, maybe that counts. And then if you do your own custom one, maybe you know Google doesn't take it, but maybe they don't care if other apps do custom in app purchases. Right. It's just if you're going to use their services, they're going to take a cut. Well, because because do you remember when YouTube Red first became a thing? And if you were going to buy YouTube Red through your iOS device, there was you had to spend a little bit extra. You had to spend, in fact, 30% extra. Yeah, that's because yeah. YouTube Red on, on a- iOS requires the 30% for Apple. Exactly. But on, yeah. a- on Android, I'm, I'm, I don't think that's I'm true. I'm almost certain it is. I don't, I'm almost I, certain I it is. I feel like Google doesn't care. But but like, so, so Amazon, for whatever reason, had their app, their video app, available not through the Play Store. Uh, but then later on... At some point, they brought it to the Play Store, and I right. think I, f- I feel like that was fairly recent, like was, sometime was, in 2017. It was in the last few weeks, yes. yeah, months, yeah. <laughs> um, and so, and and YouTube uh, was actually one of the uh, culprits. It was on the show Amazon Echo Show mm, mm-hmm. Pro Three yeah, Two, the one with the screen, one with the screen. Um, There's a then, couple with the screens, but you know, it disappeared. Oh, because oh, yeah, you know, Google wanted to do something spe- super special or something. I don't know. I, I think Amazon was going to require YouTube to do something. And Google's like, uh, nope, we're just going to remove it. Yeah, I don't know. And that really makes that Amazon device. Don't show Walmart ads. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so this whole like feud, I feel like this feud up until very, very recently was very one-sided, you know, it was like Amazon rejecting Google's, stuff right and it wasn't until very recently that that google was like okay we're just going to take away youtube from you and that was like a huge deal because youtube is like the biggest media platform in the world and so google has done that actually to other platforms so for windows phone uh, um (laughs) the youtube (laughs) app that was there Uh um stopped working because google killed it yeah because for whatever reason even though microsoft was totally willing to you know dedicate many developers to make it work out Mm -hmm. they just they just didn't cooperate and the the deal didn't get through right and and it's strange to me how there has to be a deal when there are just apis and and everything i mean yeah youtube isn't and and youtube isn't an open platform well but also but it's make that clear (laughs) it's weird too though like if the app can run it should just run yeah right yeah um and of course one of the things that presumably microsoft would have had to do was to prohibit uh playing video without the app being open oh sure no background <laughs> play yeah. yeah yeah oh you know what's funny though is uh when youtube red first became a thing and i was like had my students write a little essay about like whether or not they think this thing is is worth the price mm-hmm. you know and one of my students was like mr buck look i can just play a video in the browser in safari on my ipad turn off the screen and it keeps playing and i'm like put that in your essay write that down <laughs> that's a good one yeah convenience versus well i mean it, it was a feature that was like being locked into youtube red but like it already you could already do it in the browser right it's fine yeah um and for a little while google was um putting giving developers warnings if their if their browsers would let you play uh google or youtube in the background really yeah <laughs> they stopped but it was kind of funny oh man anyway speaking of amazon and feuds mm-hmm. foods foods, foods. Uh, that was a good one but whole foods yes. whole foods whole feuds do, do we remember remember how much that deal was how many how many instagrams how, was yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was ask. instagram's the one billion right i, I think, think so yeah uh is that right wasn't it like 16 um, instagrams so WhatsApp was like 19 Instagrams, and so Amazon's purchase of Whole Foods was only 13.7 Instagrams. Okay. Wow. it's a lot of Instagrams. 
for for the record, for anybody who can't do math, that means it's thirteen point seven billion dollars. We're getting a lot of mileage out of that joke, by the way. Of course we are. How long ago was Instagram sold? Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> like so five plus years ago. Yeah. I, I mean, okay, so Amazon bought Whole Foods for about three avocados. I mean, that's the point. So, <laughs> so. So this is this is a weird deal because Amazon doesn't normally buy uh, physical retailers, physical retailers, but also just like if they bought Target, I might get it, but they mm-hmm. bought a food store, right? So it's an interesting play. I wonder if it's more around how the companies structured their supply chain or something. Because what about blockchain? What <laughs> uh, supply chain? Oh, my mistake. Maybe sorry. they're supplying blocks, but not in that sense. <laughs> But yeah, I, you know, maybe they're maybe maybe they both run on blockchain under the hood. You bet, and that's why they're more compatible. So but I wonder if that's more of a reason rather than anything else. So I know uh, there's a Whole Foods fairly near near us here, um, and I know uh, that I have not been in that Whole Foods, even though I have Prime and I can get my avocados mm-hmm. for three cents cheaper. Um, I know that uh, I haven't been there, and I would still never go there just because I have a Prime membership. Um, how about you guys? Like, yeah. So, <laughs> groceries is a funny thing that I'm still kind of struggling with what my permanent solution is going to be. You know, because I'm living this carless uh, in this carless mm. future, and too soon. It would be it would be so great to be able to just get all of my groceries delivered straight to my door, the way that I have everything else delivered straight to my door, um, and I. I'm not sure if there are any services that uh, exist currently that would actually do that well. There, there are. Simon sure. delivers. And and uh, Coburn's delivers. Sure. Yeah. I don't and, think Simon delivers is around. I haven't seen their trucks in a decade. Yeah, they, they did out before the crash. But yeah, uh, aside from that, like my grocery shopping habits are dictated by um, my, my radius with a bike and a trailer. <laughs> That's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been in a Whole Foods in... I, who knows? It's been a long time. Right. So I, I don't know. Like it, it wasn't targeted at us, but uh, apparently the deal's working out for them. Of course, uh, what what Amazon gets out of this too is they get to not now now mine uh, an absurd amount of data about food buying habits and mm. food information from people, um, regardless if they're even an Amazon Prime member or not. Right. Right. Um. And and so that that will help them somehow in the future, presumably. Yeah. Because, like, the whole... I, I heard somebody talking about, like, oh, they might be using the, like, warehouses out back, you know, behind the, the Whole Foods as, like, a staging ground for, you know, like, getting stuff, you know. No. And, I'm, and, I, and I was thinking about it, I'm like, but, like, the Cub Foods that, I, that my family goes to has all of those, like, prime P.O. boxes, essentially, you know, right there in, in the entrance way. And, I'm, like, they don't need Whole Foods in order to do that. Amazon has it helps, that but it, it but you're right, exactly. Yeah. So, so I think we'll be seeing more about what that that purchase was for. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that a lot of the a lot of other startups in that space. So, um, Blue Apron was one. Um, mm. There were some other like um, you know send food to your house subscription services. Yeah. That, that I feel like just subscription services for any physical item is just exploding right now too. Well, right, and so when when those particular food ones, especially though, if you listen to advertisements on podcasts, hey, <laughs> oh my god, what should we deliver to you right now? You name it, we'll deliver. It. Yeah, um, I'll come by on my bike. The only one I've seriously <laughs> considered is a hot sauce one. Hot, what? What is it? <laughs> like, the, but because they had quarterly ones, so you can send a new bottle of a random hot sauce once every quarter. You should send me a link to that. Okay. Um. So, so I know Blue Apron. Um, their I don't know if it was their stock price, but their their valuation plummeted as soon as the announcement went mm. through. So I know it's a it's a really hard market to be in, and Amazon certainly benefits a lot from it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I got some more Android related stuff. Uh, Cyanogen Mod used to be our resident favorite. Uh, unofficial mod of of android and the company that kind of maintained like the at least the server structure and everything for it cyanogen they imploded yeah they whew, i don't know i don't know the details anymore of what happened to them mm-hmm. but mismanagement and stuff yeah. they um they previous to this they had a couple of like kind of official business dealings like they they provided the operating system for the early OnePlus 
phones. Oh, I think that's right. Yeah. At least the OnePlus One. I don't remember if the OnePlus Two as well. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the the company itself kind of went under. The community needed to find some solution to continue on the project, you know, of the the ROM itself, and uh, so they kind of morphed into Lineage OS. Um, and uh, they they recently celebrated one year of Lineage OS uh, existing, so pretty exciting. Um, for the most part, it it's exactly the same as CyanogenMod. Mod. Um, you know, they've continued development. Uh, they've got you know several um, of the of the apps that like replace system level apps in the Android open source project that you know they've been kind of moving ahead development of. You know that that Google has kind of ignored for many years um and uh yeah whenever whenever i get my hands on like an older phone or a you know a lower end phone that i know is not going to get updates in a reasonable timely manner i uh, i always install lineage on it and uh, and then hand it off to somebody else in my family <laughs> so i haven't so. done it in a long time so i think the mm-hmm. last phone i did it with was the one that's over there the um original moto g oh wow yeah mm-hmm poor thing um <laughs> it uh from what i from what i remember actually yeah i think that's it so i i, I know it's really good and it's polished just how um cm used to be mm-hmm. works fine works great um you know the whole problem with the the modding community is like i don't know you tell me <laughs> uh mileage may vary right yeah, maybe yeah um the the modding space is is going through an interesting shift right now i think because uh android 8.0 uh introduced project treble which um has a lot of potential to like a change the update cycle for like third party uh um hardware right but also um gives us the possibility that going forward any any devices that come out with android 8 or newer you know out of the box uh you should be able to just wipe clean uh the version of android that's on there that comes with it and install any rom that you want um you know because like right it's it's supposed to kind of make the the roms like essentially operate like using an api to access all of the lower the lower order functions on the hardware mm, um, i love when ian talks about lower order functions. thank you yeah i <laughs> so i'm making a lot of gestures with my hands that uh are kind of akin to like lego pieces kind of you know clicking together that's so, that's what how i understand apis <laughs> trying to abstract the the os layer outside yes. of a more lo- lower level away from driver the drivers and, essentially yeah. yeah yeah so that's called a hal um i think it's really interesting to note that a lot of the uh this year 2017 phones though mm-hmm the any phone that was released you know kind of in that uh i think eight came out like september ish it came out on the day of the eclipse which was uh august August? 21st okay so that's pretty convenient that we're going to talk about that soon yeah um any phone that was released since then um had the opportunity of course to use eight Mm -hmm. and the pixels came with eight of course yeah of course that makes sense but there were other vendors that intentionally did not release with eight even though they could have Mm -hmm. and most suspicion is that they did it to avoid having to support those devices longer term. Right, right. Or even do the extra work of trebleizing their phones. Yeah. So there's, it's not about taking the, what they have already and changing it a little bit. It's quite a big underlying change. They have to do uh, mm-hmm. various different partitions and driver support mm-hmm. and, uh, activities. So we'll see if it's good. Uh, my my other interest is in, doesn't actually even matter for... So the phones that desperately need this aren't the high-end ones. Like my no. my yeah. S eight plus will last for years if I didn't touch it. It does. It's so powerful. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But for a two hundred dollar phone like a, a Moto G, mm-hmm. it's going to get slower much faster, and that's when you would want to CM it or yeah. lineage lineage it. I mean, in in any case though, you're going to want the security updates that are going to patch things like crack. Right. But the question is that I have is, do we expect any vendors to actually ever bring out another Oreo Plus device if they don't want to deal with any of this nonsense? Well, so... You would hope, but I don't know. I I should think that if somebody tried at this point to come out with a, uh, a ship... Uh, I'm trying to say flagship without saying flagship. Um, you know, a, a device that 
isn't running on Android 8, right? That that us the community would just reject it outright. I hope. You know? I sh- I sure but there's hope so, so many phones mm-hmm. when you walk down the Walmart aisle, and it's so difficult to educate the the broader population on these kinds of issues. Uh, which is, you know, why I make these podcasts. <laughs> but, um, but maybe those phones yeah. in the Walmart aisle won't be so bad with Android Go. Maybe, yes. So Android Go is another thing that that came with uh, Android 8.0, um, and this is a an entirely separate release of Android, essentially, that is specifically built for devices that have less than 512 megabytes of RAM, I believe. Um, and uh, and that's that's kind of their their proxy uh, for determining when you have a, a low end device, essentially, um, is low, low RAM environments. Um, and they they, there's a lot of restrictions that the operating system just kind of places on itself in order to make sure that it'll run smoothly on these lower end devices. Um, a lot of the things actually aren't necessarily about how it's going to run on the device, but also how it treats like data, mm-hmm. because a lot of these lower end devices are being sold in countries where the data caps are much lower. You know, the the types of like cell phone plans that people have are, you know, different than the ones that we're used to um and so android go is for is this like their next billion or that's what they say that's, that's the phrase that they're that's using. what they've said before about other things yeah so we'll see <laughs> i will mention that the youtube go app looks wonderful mm. and that should have just been the youtube app because the current right. youtube app is a disaster <laughs> yeah i'm i'm particularly thrilled about the like what is it sharing like passing a video from one device to yeah. another without having to have an internet connection like mm-hmm. that's brilliant yeah. that's awesome that's that's some good distributed computing yeah or networking and uh and i talk about all of those the the project treble android go and more in the second opinion review of android 8.0 so that was that was second opinion number 30 Woohoo! yes nice you know what else we had a special on recently yeah there was an eclipse this year. A big one. It Huge looks... eclipse. Great American eclipse. Whoa. America. <laughs> yep. Um, and it, for us in particular, it's kind of special because that was a Nexus special that I put a lot of effort into, and I'm pretty proud of. He of drove all the way out to where now? Uh, the rural Wyoming. There so you we go. Were there we're... just for the Nexus. That's the <laughs> only reason he did it. <laughs> Ian is on, so dedicated. on the spot live coverage from the Nexus, and I even went out to the middle of Missouri for a second live coverage angle. Whoa. Except that you didn't you didn't record anything. No, I didn't care. <laughs> yeah, no. So the that Nexus special, um, I yeah, I recorded like our reactions to the eclipse itself. I came back and and Ryan and I talked about it in the studio, and I uh, cut it all together, and you know, it's it's a it's a nice bit of audio storytelling, if I do say so myself. Yeah. I recommend listening to it if you haven't. And I also recommend looking at the pictures that we all took. Oh yes, mm-hmm. um, mine are crap. Well, I have one good picture. Scott Scott's are are a little bit better. His his tripod was less shaky. Mm. Or just yeah. go look look online. I'm sure there's some good photographers out oh, there. Oh yeah, for well, sure. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I will uh, praise the S8 Plus from Samsung. Mm-hmm. Um, so I took my pictures through my um, Eclipse glasses with the phone. <laughs> yeah, and they're. It, you can tell it's an eclipse. It's a, the weirdest thing. I did that too. I saw it from behind the clouds in Eden Prairie. <laughs> over lunch. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. I saw it. Well, you know, it wasn't 100% here in Minnesota. So it was like a 90% maybe ish. And then, yeah. so it, it was about a minute from its peak. And then a cloud went and covered it. So I saw it almost as good as, as it was going to get. It was really eerie and interesting to see. Just the light was so different and stuff. Yeah. Which I'm sure you guys saw that, but then you actually had it. Yeah, yeah that's there's there's a lot. Yeah, it, the the difference between seeing a partial eclipse and the full eclipse is, may I say, night and day. Oh, hey. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe day and twilight. Moving on, moving yeah. on, something yeah. else. <laughs> day and eclipse. Yeah. So both uh, Apple and Google came out with some augmented reality like um, SDK. Is that what you would call these? Or are they are uh, they API frameworks. sets? Or are they frameworks? Yeah, yeah that. So AR Kit and AR Core, um, and and essentially, I mean, obviously, augmented reality itself has existed for quite a while. You know, if you're a developer, you could make an app that 
takes information from the camera and from the gyroscope and everything and puts it together in order to overlay information or objects into the real world, right? Um, Snapchat but, had been doing that for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, like uh, back in college, Katie and I were throwing around the idea of making a, an AR um app that could uh, overlay ingress portals and you know objects onto their real world locations it was going to be awesome uh, pokemon go is actually a larger oh of course example yes. of air <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but uh but yeah these these um frameworks just make it a heck of a lot easier for developers to make ar apps um and so we've we've seen as a result of this like an explosion of um ar like uses right so i think i think the the most day-to-day like use that i'm excited about is being able to use like a measuring tape just like yeah, on my measure phone you kit. Know? Yeah. yeah um and uh of course i haven't i haven't gone and like searched any ar core apps or anything like that so um the only the only experience that i've had with it is the ar stickers that uh google right put into the camera app itself yeah. so i think yeah. it'll be a while before uh any of that really can trickle down to being developer worthy for mm-hmm. somebody to build doesn't ikea have a cool app where they, you can put ikea furniture in a room and in a space yeah i think there i think there's that i know uh there's a a countertop company that has some like you can change the countertop texture yeah. mm-hmm. um so there, there's there's a bunch of uses for it but one of the problems that I have with it is that either you you have it's the same kind of like um like blockchain problem that that exists like it's always the blockchain <laughs> the year of the blockchain <laughs> it's, it's the decade of the blockchain to be honest um wow we're gonna have to do that show in like a year and a half like the decade of what blockchain um so it's it's sort of like the blockchain problem in that in order to implement it into an application you basically have to be an a, a, an expert. Um, it's not like something like, you know, we can all go out and learn React Native in a weekend and make an app and it will be good enough to put on the store. You have to be an actual expert to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's just no way to get around that. And so there's just not enough people in the market for that right now. Um, so there are probably a lot of good ideas to use the technology with, mm-hmm. but there's not enough people to go around to actually make it. Yeah, I f- but I feel like... I feel like AR is something that has a wide enough appeal, you know? You tell somebody like, oh yeah, you could, you know, use your your phone to preview like IKEA furniture in your own house before, you know, and people like get that immediately. So I agree, but that's a feature that's not a revolutionary thing. Hmm. Because I think of features as revolutionary things a lot, right? It's (laughs) it's not. It's, It's nothing. Okay. Revolutionary features. I mean, like, currently, like, the the revolutionary feature that we just kind of passed is just the fact that everybody has cameras in their pockets 24-7, right? And that, like, that's... That's not a feature. Isn't it? It's a feature it's of a, your pocket to have it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think there's there's some kind of differentiation, like, on the spectrum of, like, is it is, is it a feature or is it uh, something bigger than a feature, like a, a wider movement, a uh, change to the overall perception or platform or whatever, um like what is what is the trend of having a smartphone in general like what is that it's not a feature it's a what revolution but it's not it's not well it, it, it's a revolution for sure it's 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 enabled it's a, a lot of social changes that we've seen over the last five years you know right uh, of you know people um demanding like uh more transparency with with police departments for example right Mm -hmm. you know because you have all of these cameras that are always out there you know people can just be like oh what police doing something like i'm gonna film this so i guess i guess the difference for me is like when when i hear uh ikea preview furniture that's to like a siloed thing Mm -hmm. but what's different from that to the camera example is like i can i can share that picture with apps and people and I can do whatever I want with it. Right. It's really wide open for me to do. But with AR, it's all siloed into these apps and each app will have its own does awful it, experience. Does it have to be though? Because like if I can take out my camera enabled smartphone, TMTM, TM, uh, <laughs> and like uh, I want to sell my couch on Craigslist, for example, yeah. right? I can take my, my, 
phone and like move it around the couch, kind of scan it in, right? So that it has that 3D information. Um, and then other people who are considering buying it from me can do the same preview kind of thing uh, in, in their own house, right? Mm. Um, no matter whether I'm selling it on Craigslist or on Nextdoor or on, you know, I guarantee free cycle to you or whatever. That, that will not be possible for like 10 years. Right, but I mean, like that's that's Scanning the kind the of feature that is going to be a revolutionary that, product. Yes, that's good. Yeah, that's a that's revolutionary. If somebody needs to make that. It's not. It's I've just seen, a feature. I've until seen then. it done, but I don't think. Uh, no, there's oh, uh, using like a Microsoft. What's the Xbox thing? Connect. Connect. You can scan stuff in there. There's some smartphone mm-hmm. that does three that has three D cameras, and you can do that to scan something in, and they three D printed. A model, you know, hmm. they, they they scan something, turn it into a model, touch it up in a, th- a modeling software, and then they print it out. So, but doing all that real time in the smartphone, I think, is definitely it's here. Yeah. I don't think it's here, or or, or soon. With call the, call with back the in twenty twenty one. So that's actually one thing that I'm glad the AR kit and AR core did for us this year. Is previous to this, um, the only the only player that was really talking about AR was Google in the context of Project Tango. Right. Well, and Which Microsoft w- with the Hololens. Yes. Yeah. 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 That. Uh huh. Um. But but like Hololens was ne- has so far has not been a commercially available product. Right. Yeah. There were Project Tango enabled phones that were available on the market. One. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was immediately discontinued. <laughs> Which phone was it? It was, it was Asus an, something or other. Yeah. Zenphone oh. something, something. See, he got it. That's literally the name. Woo. Woo. Um, Zenphone something something. <laughs> um. Pro. But yeah, the like, like it it required very specific hardware in order for you to be able to have these features available to you, right? And then all of a sudden, mid year twenty seventeen, Apple starts talking about AR Kit, right? And then Google was like, "Oh crap! Like we gotta, you know, actually start doing, start start yeah. making this, you know, available for the wider Android ecosystem." And so now we've got both of them available. Yeah, and I think that's it's awesome. really hard for Google to do that too because. So far, so as far as I know, it's only available on the Pixel phones. Uh, I mean, in terms of the 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 stickers in the camera app, yes, yeah. yes. Well, mm-hmm. does it require Android eight? I don't know. I don't either. I actually have no. I don't know much about AR Core, <laughs> and, I, and I also don't have Android eight, so I have no way to verify. <sighs> Just ask all your questions. Uh, point or point all your questions to Brandon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have Android 8 either, but he is well, working at a company AR that kit. might be interested he's, in AR. He's he AR actually oh, might yeah. have Android 8 because he has the Nexus 6P. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, Do we want to talk about uh, some some I stuff can, about Apple updates some and up batteries? Up, yeah. So some of this is this year, too, but end of 2017, um, Apple, well, actually, January 2017, Apple released iOS 10.2.0. One or something like that, which sure. uh, improved the battery per- performance on iPhone successes. Six successes, six S is the iPhone success. Yeah, um, and people were kind of like, okay, well, it's better. Cool, there's a software update. Then it comes out that this fall, that some uh, one of the people who runs Geekbench, I think okay. it is, was analyzing these Geekbench scores of iPhones, and they saw that there are huge spikes at certain increments lower than what most of them were so there's a peak at the top performance you know which is what they're all clocked at and then mm-hmm. you know 500 megahertz slower and slower and slower and slower they're seeing spikes here and it, it comes out that apple had throttled the cpu performance on iphones when the battery conditions were not uh, good enough to sustain powering that cpu at full power yeah so they would slow it down throttle it down to keep the phone booted so you can open the camera app take a photo or something and not have the phone die on you and so, big uproar because people weren't aware of that. Apple didn't alert any users about that, and so, but yeah. not very many people were surprised at that, right? Because that's been a big complaint of mobile devices in general. Um, but you know, of course, Apple devices are the ones that people are aware of. That like, oh yeah, new iOS uh, updates out. My phone's gonna be slower from now on. That's that's it's been a running joke, you know. So I think I think the difference is is that they admitted that they did it. Again, just like that other thing they admitted doing, um, and the, the the reality of slow being you know getting slower phones was actually something that Apple did rather than just a side effect of hardware people bought being old. It it is in a way a side effect of the hardware being old 
because like but apple kind of made the decision you know we right. had, we either had the option of having uh phones that shut off seemingly randomly right because they the cpu was trying to draw more power than the old mm-hmm. uh battery could I would have been fine sustain. with that that's um, that's a legit thing to happen <laughs> um or we could have the current situation where like the phone slows itself down in order to avoid shutting off randomly right and and like apple made that decision for the customers um and but like it the the problem still stems from the old hardware itself right and it, but but it was the intervention that everybody freaked out about yeah and I do think that they made the right decision there. I agree. Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But they needed to be way more upfront about it. They needed to pop up on the screen like, hey, your phone is old. Where We have to do some stuff. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Not your phone. Your battery is old. Yeah. Your phone's old. And so what I'm excited your about- Your old phone isn't old. <laughs> says the one who won't buy an Apple device that's more than a month old. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes, but then once I have it, I'm going to have a phone for exactly two years and then buy another one. Uh-huh. Uh, I have not that's- bought a phone in a long time. I've- freaking out over here i can i can see that <laughs> <laughs> when you say that like i'm going to have a, a phone for exactly two years that sounds like you know the american dream with 1.5 children and <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like it. Yeah. um but no like so so what i'm really excited about from from all of this is now we have the the world's premier mobile operating system right which one's it's, that again that's ios okay uh it uh not the most widespread mobile operating system, but the premier one. Uh, I don't. I could beg to differ. I, they uh, now will podcast. show you what, like, what status your battery is in. They right? will show you it. It has in not been put future in. Future update. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Future update. Now you've so, been able to get at this information through USB through hacks. Some iTunes. Oh, really? Things. Huh. Uh, so iTunes gets that information. Uh, there's an app called Coconut Battery, which can tell you the battery percentage. That sounds fake. <laughs> it's totally real. I promise you. <laughs> But you, you plug it in, you get the information. And okay. I've, I've jailbroken iPhones in the past um, and seen that information as well. Yeah. But like, like, but now it's going to be available to the user mm-hmm. in the, the iPhone software. In a, in a first party. Yeah, first party. Right? Because yeah. I imagine that something called coconut battery is not first party. Definitely not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so now that like Apple's going to be implementing that in iOS, I'm excited for other manufacturers, Android, Windows Phone, et cetera, to like kind of follow suit mm-hmm. because I would love to be able to see the actual status of like the health of my battery. Yeah, um, so what I've been doing for all my phones, partially because I'm a freak, but also because I think uh, it's good to know, is I run this app called AccuBattery and mm-hmm. it actually charts all this stuff out for me. So it tells me, um, you know, based on the charging cycle, um, you know, the rate of degra- degradation, uh-huh. um, what the capacity is oh, nice. um, and you know, stuff like that. Uh, it, it, it's not as good as it could be because it can't monitor some processes and you know, there's reasons if it w- could actually be built into the system at a low level and actually just be honest with me, that would be so much more useful. Yeah. And I wouldn't have to blame Google for things. I could blame rightfully. So the OEMs for being bad. I like the scatter plots it's got in this, in this app. Yeah, I'm going to have to go and grab this. So the information I usually see from Apple about, about all their batteries is the current charge in milliamp hour or the current charge capacity in milliamp hours, the total capacity in milliamp hours, and the original manufacturer capacity in milliamp mm-hmm. hours. And the health is just the simple, you know... The percentage, right? Yeah, what it what it has now versus what it used to have. And that's, that's all the health is. But it's more than that, too. Because yes. Because batteries, you know, they're a complex chemical compound. And yeah. so, you know, you have to consider... An older battery that's been charged a lot. So, yeah, cycle count also goes into it. So, if you have a high cycle count and you're low charge and it's cold out, that battery is not going to be able to do much mm-hmm. of anything. And I think I think it has to even be more than that. So, if the voltages is what the, the batteries were having problem with, they need to be able to report, like, a running average of your voltage. Um, you know, what's the current output? What's the current uh, current? And that I kind of stuff. This has become a problem in recent years because phone CPUs have just gotten so much more powerful. So, they just draw more power you know they're they're getting efficient more efficient but not at the same rate as they're increasing the frequency and right yep and finally the major news piece that we have from 2017 is the crack attack uh vulnerability that was revealed when was this uh we, we first talked about it in feels pod, like mid-year pod kit number 33 uh which was in october I, that's so, mid-year yeah sure <laughs> 
I honestly don't remember what this was at all. Something about Wi-Fi. WPA2. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay, right. A vulnerability where it was discovered where you could um, trick a, a device that's trying to connect to a, a Wi-Fi hotspot into like resending the keys i think or, or like zeroing that. out the keys or something like that yeah um thus breaking the encryption um and so you could you could trick that people into like connecting to a, a, a physical device that is faking its its wi-fi hotspot um and uh and snooping you know yeah all of their packets you can hear me ryan and brandon talk about it in podcast number 33 yep and so so this is like uh, the WPA standard has existed for ever a long time, basically forever. Yeah, sure. You remember WEP, WP? Uh, vaguely. I mean, we, yeah. we can say fifteen years. Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds about right. And so it's yeah, it's kind of it's kind of odd that we had that happen on October, and more recently we've got the meltdown thing. Um, that's you know like these these very very old frameworks systems you know that we've been using and have taken for granted for like forever and uh and all of a sudden we're finding some vulnerabilities in them and well i feel like that's saying something in security inside of software Mm -hmm. you know it's it's gotten better and better and better um that they're just having to go to lower level things oh yeah not not just bugs in software but like inherent protocol issues and Mm -hmm. design and yeah of certain standards that are used everywhere and so and a lot of this stuff is around for a long time so there is some documentation on it and i think some of it too is you know old open source utilities and frameworks are often a source for Mm -hmm. you know find some issue there that's used in a billion devices and might be useful yeah yeah and so like the the crack attack is one of the reasons that i've you know i've talked to people for a really long time about like when you buy something, like, make sure, for example, an Android phone, you know, like, make sure that it's going to be one that is going to be getting software updates for a long time. And people are like, well, why would I want that? You know, and I'm and, and, and like, I could talk about, you know, all the awesome new features that come in new versions of Android and stuff, but nobody cares about those. What I should be talking about is like, security. you never, yeah, you never know what security vulnerabilities are going to be discovered about your current version of Android. And you're going to want more secure versions later on. So... On the other okay. hand, I don't know if normal people even care about even wanting them. I don't think they actually want them. They don't care. Versus a hundred dollars off or updates, they'll take the hundred dollars. Versus fifty dollars yeah. off, they'll take the fifty dollars. It's hard. Twenty five dollars. It's take hard it. to argue with a hundred dollars. I mean, that's the whole Benjamin, right? As far as I'm concerned, whole, I don't think there's good old girl Frank. <laughs> I don't think there's any ben, Benny Frank as Benny uh, as, as, as Brandon would call him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any. Monetary value that normal people TM would pay mm-hmm. for a point update of Android. Yeah, remember yeah. when Apple charged for the iPhone OS three update? I don't. I think that was actually only an iPod Touch, ten dollars. I do remember. <laughs> I, 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 ten dollars for copy paste. I, I do remember that actually because they didn't build it into their scheme mm-hmm. at the time. That's interesting. What do you mean? What scheme? So they they uh they had to justify it with their accounting department like um all of the the cost for the update had to be um accounted for somewhere and so they they told everybody so like it's going to be ten dollars this time and then a few months later when they were going to get the next one ready um they explained that this one's going to be free because we've built it into the cost of the product now huh okay yeah it was a weird artifact of a legacy world yeah i feel like there was some like legal reason or something too like for what they promised when they sold it. I'm not sure. Yeah. Some consumer protection and accounting. Yeah. Well, we don't have that in the U.S., so it wasn't here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Europe. True. Who knows? All right. So now we're going to talk about some actual, like, physical products that you can touch with your hands what? that came out in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. So first cool. one, actually, you probably don't want to touch with your hands too much. Well, you want to touch it to put it in, but not to uh, ever again. Right. Yeah. Ryzen. Ryzen? It, yeah, it's an AMD thing. Yes. What yes, the, it is. It's like it's like a chip. It is a chip. Mm-hmm. A really good chip. Tell me about it. So earlier this uh, year, the the AMD had um, started to actually come out with details about their new lineup of chips for the first time in I don't know maybe six or seven years. Mm-hmm. So the previous lineup of Bulldozer 
was sort of a letdown compared to what came before it, which was the Phenom lineup. Okay. And so Bulldozer was supposed to kind of a big bet on uh, enhanced IPC, which is inter-process communication. So basically, they made a big bet on multiple cores mattering more than um, clock speed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that was a bad bet to make at that time in history Uh um, because performance mattered more um, of an individual core than it turned out multi-core, multi-threading did. So... There were other implementation details that didn't make that particular product very good. So Ryzen was sort of the solution to that, and there's many factors that make Ryzen technically better than Bulldozer, but but basically it's it's performance compared to Intel and price compared to Intel is where it really shines now compared to any time previously. Mm-hmm. So um, at the top end. Uh, Intel sells uh, some chips for uh, roughly a thousand dollars. To get the same level of, of performance from Ryzen, you can pay as low as five ninety nine and get the same performance. And it's it's just incredible that you can do that kind of thing. Awesome. So um, they have various lineups now. So they have the regular Ryzen lineup. They have the APU lineup for laptops that's mm. with integrated graphics. They have the more um, enthusiast like workstation lineup. Which is the Threadripper series? Okay. Threadripper, <laughs> um, and they also have a server chip lineup. I don't know if that's out yet, but that will have the ability to have hundreds of cores, um, and this is good for server situations where uh, paralyzing um, is what you do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Ryzen made a huge shock in the industry beyond just the the chips being good, because it started to drive Intel to release some variations. So typically, an i5 never came with hyper-threading. Well, now... Yeah, unless it was in a laptop. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so now, uh, some i5 chips are coming with hyper-threading. Ah. Um, and one of the generations coming soon from Intel will have a 6-core and then 12-thread mm. um, i7 available. That's um, the Coffee Lake coming out in right. later this 2018 year, and and so and and this is this is sort of driven by the huge push here by AMD and Ryzen. So what you're saying is this was an unfortunate year for me to have gotten brand new computers with Intel i5s for my classroom. No, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Uh, if you, you, it's better than still running Windows XP. Oh yes, for yeah. sure. And 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 so like. If you had a computer that was made with, um, you know, anything like newer than a Haswell, you're probably fine. Mm-hmm. This generation won't make a difference for you unless you were doing, you know, hardcore video editing, hardcore right. audio processing, right. um, hardcore compiling, maybe even hardcore um, computing. <laughs> but but even all, all of those things would, you know, if you had to pick between. Um, a processor upgrade or a solid state upgrade, the solid state upgrade would right. be many orders of magnitude more noticeable Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah it's fine yeah you still have new new modern cps so yep 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 awesome and uh we actually had somebody on the network who built a brand new computer uh this last fall andrew bailey uh in control structure number 127 uh he put together a an amd ryzen build and uh did a whole a whole video episode of that I think this was the one he learned about video editing with in Blender. Yeah, which, which is, is so cool. Such a crazy yeah. concept. I love it. Yeah. Yep. I also made my own Ryzen build. Um, and, and to note, it was the easiest computer build I've ever done. He plugged it in and it just worked. There was not a single problem. Good. Awesome. Yeah. That's how Intel works too, right? <laughs> not always. Yeah. It's not their fault though. So usually I discovered when I built my computer that it helps if you, uh, you know, Click the the on button on the power supply. Mm. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> How long did that stump you for? It, uh, you know, I you know, just, <clears throat> I wasn't the one who came up with the solution. Okay, uh, we'll just say that. <laughs> now, the Nintendo Switch. It's a lot easier to find the on button. I think. I hope so. <laughs> you just switch it on. Switch. Hey, <laughs> I'm sorry. You switch it on. There we go. This yeah. is like one of the best selling consoles. I, ever right? i think it was determined to be the fastest selling console the at least selling, yeah. in north america it's like 10 million mm. units i think it was 
That's the one number I saw. Yeah, yeah, and and like I totally understand why because I don't being Tell able me more. so so having the like full triple A you know like the, the 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 fully featured video games that you expect to play like on your couch plugged into a television you know uh but be able to like get up and walk away and like bring it to the park and just keep playing it like that is a killer feature. Mm-hmm. That's why this is selling so well. Is it a revolution? Yeah. It's, yeah, I would say so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because like have, like merging those that that stationary uh kind the of power of stationary, but the mm-hmm. portability of portable. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, and it and it does it so like up until now, having like a Windows laptop that's good enough to play. 95% of games, right? Maybe it can't play like Crisis at, at full settings, but you know, whatever. Neither um, can the like, Switch, I will like, have you know. No, that's true, yes. <laughs> um, but like having a having a Windows laptop up until now was like the 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 way to have full console level, you know, video gaming in a portable setting, right? Um, and this is the first time, like obviously we've had handheld um, consoles you know, the Game Boys, the PSPs, et cetera, et cetera. We've had those for many, many years, but they never could play the same games as you would play on your console plugged into your television, right? Um, and so that's, that's like, kind of the shift here. Um, that's that's what the, the Switch brings to the table yep. that nobody else has done so far. And I, and I still think it's hilarious that the uh, Switch, like, is... It, it it is what the NVIDIA Shield tablet wanted to be. <laughs> right, and isn't that interesting? Because well, it uses an NVIDIA chip inside of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when I heard that it used an NVIDIA chip, I just went, oh. Well, it's the same chip, isn't it? N- no, it's, 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 it's a custom it's, chip, but it's the same kind of, family. So, so yeah, yeah the, the Shield tablet ran the Tegra K1. Uh, the Switches is based on the tegra x1 yeah it sounds right yeah okay. um also it, it runs so hot that it needs a heat pipe yes mm-hmm. in it, the switch it actually has a fan mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah like <laughs> my chrome my chromebook didn't pro, have a fan pro tier <laughs> console there um so yeah i think it's amazing um it's it's been sold really well and, and and nintendo treats its fans so well i just i have to i have to praise the nintendo totally facetious yes yeah just so you couldn't tell well, nobody can see you shaking your head, Ryan. No. <laughs> yeah, I um, like. I really wish that they had taken that final step of like, okay, we've got this thing. It's running an NVIDIA Tegra chipset, right? It is a tablet. It's it comes with right. a a proper um, operating system. Uh, operate well, eh, it doesn't come with a proper operating. Well, system. that's the point. But it, it comes with like a proper touch screen, right? It's not one of those um, resistance. Resistance, yeah. yeah. It's actually capacitive. Um, it, does it know, have a stylus? Doesn't have a stylus. No, it does not. Good. No. Um, it has the potential of like coming out of the box with the biggest library of games of any console ever right because like we have built up a huge library of android games that are already available they already i I can see why they didn't do that because because they want to maintain control of their of their ecosystem well yeah but they would the the quality and the style of game and what yeah that i guess a bit of control over what they want their console to be known for and and also i think like the other problem is they would have had to partner with Google, and I don't know if Nintendo can Not handle Not necessarily. That. They could, because, like, Amazon has their own app, like, store, right, um, that is completely separate from Google Play, and they sell other people's games, right? Like, uh, Monument Valley was, they, they is, has been featured. They sell the games from... that, that have developers put them into the store. Exactly. Like, Nintendo I could... find it hard to believe that Android could support yet another platform. I don't know. What does that mean? And- I, not, you- I, I mean, like, I find it hard to believe that Android developers would even fathom supporting another platform. If it's Nintendo platform, yeah. No. Like that's a that's a no brainer. I I couldn't even believe it. <laughs> if I if I could reach all I, of these, I could see it. I, think. I can't. Like if if I could um add all of these kids that suddenly have you know it's a Nintendo Switch to the the list of people who I can reach. Uh, 
without you know putting in like hardly any more effort i just have to submit it hardly. to hardly there's so much more effort it's totally different api right right once compile everywhere. oh my gosh not even close it is a disaster <laughs> yeah. waiting to happen um like there's no way nintendo could even build such a system so that's one of the reasons they didn't do it i yeah and i think nintendo does want control that's you know it's every, every other version of any system they've made they have you know, people have to submit to Nintendo through them, and and, and it enforces, you know, a higher quality of, of game probably, and mm-hmm. you're not you're not going to be known for having all of the Android games too, because then yeah. you're just like, oh, it's just an Android tablet plus a couple Nintendo ones, right, right. When in reality, it's a Nintendo console mm-hmm. that happens so, to run. So it. do yeah. we know if they're ever going to get like apps? I heard there's an update coming out here soon. With you know things like YouTube and internet browser, Netflix, and stuff. yeah, I something. Think, I think Netflix. Anybody? No, more of your standards, Media Center. Media comedy. Center. Now there's a callback. That's a good app. <laughs> uh, smart TV style of application. Yeah. Okay, so I got a, I got a cool question. M- media for consumption stuff. Yes. Yeah. So yes. when do you think the next Switch will come out? This is it. Well, there can't be one. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because it, well, it's been more than two months. Uh, Brian can't buy one. So. <laughs> uh, I'm asking no for a friend. <laughs> um, so they did the new 3DS, which they did that was years ago. Well, I mean, it, yeah, I suppose. I don't know. It's relatively new to me. It's, it says new. It must be new. I oh, can, it's I can the buy new that iPad. <laughs> uh, oh, fantastic. Just like, so the iPad generation, third generation, the new iPad? Exactly. Yeah, I can still buy that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I, no. I don't think it'd be this year, but I feel like it's got to be soon because that hardware is not going to age well. That That's true. Yeah, that is the the trade-off kind of is we're, we're, we're now wading into this arena where nothing lasts. But it's it's not that expensive. It's what two ninety nine. It it can do. It can play in the house. It can play well, out on the go. <clears throat> it's only a hundred dollars more than the uh, new three DS, which is two years old. Yeah, but you have you really have to consider that like the budget three DS isn't the three DS. It's the two DS. I don't even right. No, and so like I had to. It's do... only fifty dollars cheaper. It's not. Again, I had to not do that a much. lot of convincing to to tell my sister like you don't want to get a 2ds right now because nintendo is not going to be bringing all of its new games games to that that. they're going to be bringing them all to the switch for sure and like it took a lot of convincing yeah no but for sure but on the other hand if you want to play pokemon you have to buy the old console thing first Unless you only want to buy the or uh, play the Pokemon's that are coming out from now on, because the next one's going right. to be on Switch, which isn't here yet. So right, we have to wait. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eh, video games. Speaking of consoles, well, we, uh, before we no, before we move there's, there's on, uh, more. we we do I do want to to mention, of course, that we reviewed the Nintendo Switch in full uh, with Josh yes. Schumacher, who is one of my housemates who owns one. I'm so glad. Uh, back on Second Opinion number twenty seven. Yeah. yeah, Matt has one. He's been playing uh, the the game with the hat. What is it? The Zelda one? No. Snipper Clips? No, I think it's Mario with a hat. Oh, Mario Odyssey, yada yada. Something with a hat, yeah. Yeah. Mario Odyssey World? Does that Super, sound right? Super Mario Odyssey World? I don't know Nintendo. It's... Galaxy 3D64? <laughs> so, Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. Woohoo! This is the kind of news that I used to be covering. Yeah, I know, right? Uh... Me too. And and there's nothing to say here except there are bumps in performance, I guess. So they they technically support 4K now, but the performance in, you know increases isn't really enough to warrant it. Is kind of what I've heard. I don't like know. the people who I've talked to who have these consoles or are you know know about these consoles basically say, yeah, now they can play 1080p with like good quality. <laughs> so so I think so the the one of the reasons they did this was the old SKUs were so old now. Nobody would be able to sell them for the original four ninety nine price points. Okay, because so, retailers want to deprecate the price, you know, lower the price over time. Mm-hmm. And so these the the both vendors here needed to release a new one so that they could go back to the original price point. Why do they want that though? Like so, having a lower price point is good, but they want the money from the product. Uh, okay, okay. And then, of course, there's NVIDIA who immediately, uh, you know, released the Titan X yada yada whatever. And we're like, hey, this thing is twice the, as powerful as the Xbox Wait, One X. Has new Titan come out? The, yeah. With the, there's always a new Titan. What's the current uh, architecture of the ten, of the 1000 series? There's What's that one called? Is that <laughs> Kepler? Pascal? Uh, it's Pascal right Pascal. now. Is it a Pascal-based Titan then? I don't know. Okay. 
I think Maxwell is after that. Hmm. I'll find know. out. CES hmm. is literally in three days. We need a. Uh, we, we'll just wait for Ian Well or Ryan Well or. <laughs> there you go. Sure. Um, got some new new phones that came out this Lot, year. Lots of new phones this year. So let's let's get started on the phone I, I, business. I guess this year was really the year of like edge to edge displays. Um, yeah. yeah, I'd say I'd yeah. say that. Um, so so one of the big phones of the year that sort of started the whole pattern was the S8 Plus in April uh, mm-hmm. and S8 small one in, also in April. Um, and then later in the year, uh, maybe August ish, the, the note, uh, the note yep. eight came out, and, and of course last year, two thousand sixteen, it's very yeah. confusing. Yeah, um, there was an explosive release of the Note Seven. <laughs> <laughs> explosive release, I like that. Um, and uh, due is, to the, and, is that joke ever going to get old? No, um, and and due to that, there was some skepticism um, that that Samsung would be able to release such an amazingly good phone um, in 2017. Well, the S8 came out, and pretty much the whole phone changed its like it changed the community's opinion of what, about these about Samsung on these phones. Mm-hmm. There's no stupid home button uh, on the front anymore. The screen is amazing; it wraps around the edges. Um, it it's doesn't. A very nice looking. It design. doesn't look horrible like the uh, S7 Edge and the S6 Edge, whatever those are. Um, it's it's just an amazingly good looking normal phone. Mm-hmm. They they so they changed everything, and it just it's, it leaves you speechless about how they were able to do that. So the uh, S9 is going to be revealed here in a couple months, probably. Um, and I wouldn't expect it to be a shocking difference, but uh, one of the major gripes that everybody has with the S8 and S8 Plus and the Note 8 um, is that the fingerprint sensor yeah. is right next to the camera on the back, and it's very easy to put your finger in front of the camera <laughs> or even on the camera's glass by accident. And so it's an annoying issue, and it's most likely going to be resolved. Um the dream was to have the technology for under the glass fingerprint sensing to be available, but the dream did not come true. No, and that would have been the dream for the iPhone 10 as well. Yeah, maybe. But I think so. Maybe. Like, I think if if that had been ready, then so, Apple would have gone with that. Actually, I've been using the S8's implementation of Face to Unlock, so I can just hold it here and it will just unlock. Sure. And it's mm. cool. Um, and so I can totally see why that's a thing. And it's actually really nice, but but you're right. For confirmations, it makes sense to have a biometric on the on the device level mm-hmm. security too. Yeah. Uh, what other phones came out, Ian? Well, uh, the Pixel Two and Pixel Two XL came out. Uh, that's the one that I, that I bought this year. Which one of those was good? The well, the regular size one. Hey. But that's what I would have answered either way anyway. Mm. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a. Um, I refuse to get a phone that has a body that's larger than like, you know, the Nexus 5X. So so so, so the the Pixel 2 is the small one, the 2XL is the large one. Mm-hmm. Um I think these are probably some of the best hardware like best build quality. Um Yeah, yeah. I um, uh, Google phones. Google phones? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Mm-hmm. Uh but the 2XL had an issue. Let's just say. Yeah, the yeah. Well, yeah. The so the screen much a ali- much maligned screen. The screen is probably the worst screen available in a premium flagship at that price point that any phone has ever had ever. Yeah. And and I'm not used to like uh, playing ball in this price point at all, you know? I oh, oh, so we should talk about that then too. So the S8 um I think was 750 the S8 Plus was eight fifty hundred dollars more. <laughs> the the two Pixel two, how much was that? Six fifty. Yes. And the two XL was eight fifty, so it's a lot more. Was that a two hundred dollar yeah. bump? Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Because oh yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, and then the, pay for that screen. And then and then <laughs> the uh, we will soon to be talking about iPhone ten slash X slash who knows what it's called was one thousand dollars so i noticed that earlier you mentioned uh people you know making the decision of whether they would have a hundred dollars or reliable software updates uh i guess i got a hundred dollars and reliable software updates but i have a better phone uh well so that's but you can't display the new emojis 
I, no, I have nine. <laughs> so you, so oh. earlier in the day, you sent me this bear emoji, and on the phone, I had no idea what it was. You couldn't see the bear emoji. No, I could see it, but it did not look like a bear. Oh, what I don't did, know what, what it did was. It look like, um, like a llama. I don't know. See, I was... that was done Slack too. That was the Slack colon bear colon. That's all it was. I don't know, man. See, I would say Ryan that. You do not have a better phone because you you can't just you know Project Trouble strip out all of the. Uh, the That's true. <laughs> the, but the I have a Android better phone. That you have and there's there's nothing you can say about this phone that isn't better than that phone. It has a better screen. It's faster. Maybe I don't know if that's true. So you're talking hardware wise though. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I I, I consider software to be much more important. In- and and for ninety percent of the software, it's about the same. Yeah. I, I yeah. use Action Launcher just like you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't I don't see TouchWiz ever. And the TouchWiz features that I do see on the rare occasion are actually very useful, like my scrolling screenshot button. That is very nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So would I get another one? Absolutely. Yeah. Call me back in two months. And that is that is a good <laughs> point. Um that like as much as we talk about, oh man, here's the awesome new updates in like the new features in the, the latest version of Android. Um, Samsung has kind of been ahead of the game well, in terms of like implementing. Well, because they had split screen on they did. all of their Android devices like years before it came to the Google standard AOSP. Um, I will mention that I still don't have Oreo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> and and I know for a fact that when you do get Oreo, it's not going to be troubleized. No, it can't be. Yeah. But maybe the S9 will be, so we'll see. We can hope. Yeah. We can hope. So, iPhone 10 slash X. Yes. Yes, iPhone 10. It's, you know, kind of a similar edge-to-edge display concept, though I think the bezels are maybe a touch larger than the S8 on the sides, but on the top and bottom. Much smaller. They're much smaller. They're the, the, the same the scr- size. The as screen on the side. really just goes all the way to the bottom. Yep. And on mm-hmm. the top, too, aside from the, the sensor housing. Oh, hello there, Notch. Big week. How's that Minecraft going? Oh, it's going really well <laughs> since it's been sold to Microsoft. Um, so the notch on the iPhone 10. Well, how, how, what do we think about the notch? Um, I So I've used an iPhone 10 in the Apple Store once or twice, but that's really all my experience. From what I've seen, it really seems fine. It Just having the screen go to the top on, and the bottom just kind of fills the space. The notch just kind of goes away. You know, there's nothing there. It, it the status bar just kind of wraps around it. So it, it, yeah, it's a little visually jolting, but other than that, it's really fine. Functionally, I mm-hmm. think it's totally worth all the features, or, you know, the for Face ID. From what I've heard from people is it's super fast. Um, but we know in two years that it'll be super slow because, you know, <laughs> something else. Because your battery. <laughs> yeah, um, possibly, I don't know. When I first started seeing pictures of it, I had to go and look up what is normally in that spot in the system, you know, notification tray mm-hmm. because I'm not an iOS user so, and I and I couldn't remember what goes there. Yeah. And and like my my initial impression was, well, how are you supposed to see all of your notification icons? And then I looked at, you know, older screenshots of iOS and I was like, oh, there never are any. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> the notification center in iOS is dismal. So the, you know they did a few things like they don't show the carrier anymore; they just show the signal, mm-hmm. and they which moved, is good. They should they have never the, done that. The signal dots to the signal bars again, right. which takes up less space. Good. There are a couple other space saving things they do, but I don't remember what. Yeah. But yep. I don't know. I'm. I'll be buying the next version of their iPhone 10 like device next fall. And and I'm really curious to see where they take this in terms of their lineup of like different device sizes right because up until now they had uh okay iphone se was for people who are still holding on to that tiny screen size you know form factor um they had the you know the the regular size 4.7 inch and then the plus size for people who like the big phones uh and now that they've introduced the iphone 10 there's only one size for that so far so far yes and that is uh if i understand correctly it's about the same body size as the regular size iphone 8 right and but it but the screen size diagonal you know is more comparable to the plus yes that is correct and so i'm really curious to see uh, you know, will they come out with an, an iPhone 10 style edge to edge that's 
the body size of like the SE and then have about the same screen size as the regular size, you know, current iPhone 8, you know, um, will they be making a plus version of the iPhone 10 form factor? Uh, or is that just going to be too much screen? Right. You know, it's, it's, no. it's, it's interesting to see where this is going to go. The answer is no. That's not going to be too much. So, so we already and know. What are they going to name these things? Well, obviously it's the 10 plus. <laughs> Um, but where's the iPhone 9? It's gone, just no. like Windows 9. I, um, I am actually looking forward to seeing uh, what Android's going to do when they, you know, because next year they should be going up to Android 9. But are they going to skip that and go to 10? They can. Why not? What letter would it be? <laughs> it's a number. No, what letter? Oh, uh, t- 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 uh, R O P. What's O L M N O P. What's a what's a P dessert? A popcorn. Okay, maybe. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Cracked it wide open. Yeah, I don't. I don't hey. know. <laughs> Popped it right open. <laughs> um, so we already know what the um, bigger size iPhone 10 would be like. It'd be like the Note sure. from the Samsung sure. lineup. Yeah. So um, minus that horrid stylus. That thing is amazing. Wow, I've never heard anybody like poo-poo the stylus I've, before. You people should only be able to praise the Note. I don't think it's don't a know. joke. All right. Um, uh, yeah. If you want to hear more about the iPhone 10, you can hear Ian and Aaron, Aaron yep. uh, discuss it on uh, Second Opinion episode 33. Yep. It's good, good episode. Highly recommended. Yeah, it was. The uh, Pixel 2 I reviewed on Second Opinion number 31, and the Galaxy S8 we re- reviewed way back in like during May. the summer, right? Yeah, Second Opinion number 24. Woohoo! Uh. Um, I will be purchasing the next one, so get ready for the next one. <laughs> Cool. All right, now I'll just quickly go through some Apple stuff that also came out. Yeah. Apple Watch Series 3, which I reviewed uh, to Ian. Yep. I think, yeah, on SO28. Mm-hmm. Uh, faster with cellular and... I think that's the game changer right there is having yeah. cellular on it. And I have canceled my cellular on it. <laughs> well, that, that was quick. <laughs> I went the three months that uh, the Apple give you credit for. And, and the $17 I, a month. Uh, it came down to... Uh, between fourteen and fifteen, uh-huh. but so they credited hmm. me fifty five dollars for it all ish, and after all the fees, I only paid seven for three months. But it's not so bad. I uh, canceled after that because I just really I wasn't using it at all. Right. I'm not the type right. to be without my phone. If I'm out biking, I bring my phone with me. If I'm running, which mm-hmm. I never do, I don't have to worry about it because I never do that. And I'm Brian. I never run. Yeah, not not in the way that Apple envisions a a runner to use an Apple Watch. Sure, sure. It's more like me, like. Uh oh, I'm late. I need to run, and uh, yeah, good watch. I like it. Uh, Brandon got one as well, but without cellular. So, mm-hmm. uh, also Apple TV 4K uh, came uh, with this. Apple added support for 4K movies in iTunes, and they would upgrade all of your old non 4K. Oh, nice! Well, they upgraded old movies to 4K. I think this kind of came along with the movies anywhere, which used to be known as Disney Movie Anywhere. Yeah. So a bunch of the studios came together and have one source. For all the movies, that could that was a news item that they're we probably, probably still about. DRM'd up the wazoo. Well, but, I'm you know. yeah, but you know now you can, now so when I send in the, now I have several vectors of attack too. <laughs> well, it was weird because I well um, you could uh, exfiltrate the the video content using various vulnerabilities uh-huh. from this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you 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 get into one system and then you suddenly have it everywhere. Because I I clicked on YouTube and purchases and all of a sudden there were eight items there instead of there just go. the one. Mm-hmm. I think pretty much all of those are free things I've gotten over the years too. YouTube purchases being also Google Play because like yeah. Google can't keep track of what is what. For some reason, I got the first Transformers movie on YouTube <laughs> years ago. That's amazing. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Okay. Uh, so 4K content, it's uh faster than new Apple TV. I think I'll be buying one since I did buy a 4K TV. I should probably get the 4K Apple TV. Uh, late in the year, as Apple had kind of mentioned in the roundtable. The iMac Pro is released. Uh, this is uh, starts at five thousand dollars with an eight core Xeon, and goes up to a eighteen core Xeon at fourteen thousand dollars if you max out that RAM at one hundred twenty eight gigabytes and the solid state at like four terabytes or something absurd. And this was the one that was kind of like stealth release. Like they all of a sudden there were several like tech YouTubers well, who had their hands on it. And then, well, that's like, when it, we we knew it was going to happen in December, but they didn't. They never set a date. They just uh, said. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, they, no, I think they said this is when pre-orders are. Or no, no, wait, no, 
Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> no, we knew we, we knew it was coming out in December, but it just sort of happened. Like they didn't tell us beforehand. Was it the reviews that came before they said it's going to be for sale on this date? Yes. Yeah, because yeah. the date was like two days away. Right. Right. Okay. It was, That's very, when I was... it was a very strange release. It's almost like they didn't really know yeah. for sure. That's where my mind was going when I was... Was there a hurricane? No. That got in the way of the uh, the keynote? No. Um, so the iMac Pro is an interesting uh, interesting product for the year because, you know, it's it's not that much more expensive than the regular iMac. Mm-hmm. Well, it's 800 more than the most expensive... Well... Yes. Yeah. The most expensive normal iMac is very expensive, but it's still under what this lower end one and is. so this but one costs five thousand dollars and you can spec it out all the way to the good old fourteen thousand dollars that's what i used to do in high school got the kind of thing i would i would like go on to alienware's website and like spec out their uh, laptops Dell has to, some crazy yeah. workstations that you can get super expensive for yeah them. and i would just kind of look at them and drool but yeah but it seems like a good product it's you know it was apple's vision of the next pro computer that they made mm-hmm. before they said because there's a lot of revolt around. Oh, we should do a Mac Pro. So game. I have I have mixed opinions on good product. It's uh it, on an entry level price. I think it's really good, um because you're getting Xeons, you're getting good graphics. Your sweet spot from what people seem to say is the 10 core chip. Uh yeah, it sounds more. sounds about right. Yeah. But it still suffers from Appleism, which is why is it why is it so thin when it could just have been a little thicker and it could have vented better. It could have had more surface area to. I cool. heard this thing is super cool though, or super silent. I know, but it still suffers from That's over-engineering from... for uh, constraints that didn't need to be there. Well, it could have been they, more silent. They, but they researched and said it can fit in the old iMac case. When there's no three and a half inch hard drive, they have that much more space I, to put the heating. I, I, it's yeah. questionable. Ryan demands total silence. Hey. <laughs> so uh, another interesting thing came out this year. Um, Last year there was a, a an iMac an iPad Pro nine point seven inch, mm-hmm. and this year why well, have one iPad Pro when you could delete that one and get two different ones? It's the new iPad Pro ten point five inch and the, the other updated one updated twelve point nine inch. Yeah, it's exciting. I think. Yeah. Well, it was exciting enough for you to buy one. Yeah, I'm using it right now. I don't know. Like it's an iPad doesn't do anything also listen to the fringe because or boy did i talk about this ipad ryan you should just grab some of his exclamations about how smooth it is and stick them in here beep boop beep boop (laughs) of what here's my review it's nice but another ipad nothing really to write home about it's it's faster and it's faster in in both cpu and display performance barely useful at all and it's a little bigger (laughs) like that that's really about it there's not i mean there's not an iPad is an iPad. There's not much more to it. Yeah, exactly. There's there hasn't been anything to write the, home about. The display is you know a little faster. Oh my gosh, it scrolls so fast. He's I so impressed it. with it. I, I love it. So I I have <laughs> I have nothing to go off of, and there's nothing special about it whatsoever. You have every every computer you've ever used is slower than this. So yeah, it's a nice iPad, but uh, it it doesn't do anything that's like revolutionary or that interesting. It has a widescreen display. So so iOS on it, for example, has a dock, which is super cool because you can summon the dock whenever you want. It's great. It's neat. Yeah, but I think that's a thing in iOS 11 for all of it, the iPads. It is. And, yeah. and, and so, again, the iPad Pro doesn't really do anything that a normal iPad Air could have done. But the kicker is they got rid of the iPad Air lineup, and so now you can only get a worthless iPad or a Pro iPad. Huh. Okay. So isn't that funny? Wait, is a worthless one the Mini? No, so they're 329. About? They don't make the mini anymore. Oh, well, that's a shame because I like I like the mini size. Oh, it was yeah. I when I got my so I bought an iPad Pro 9.7 inch a year after it was released this last May. And that screen size made a huge difference. I use my iPad way more because I think it's easier to see, easier to use than with the mini. Hmm. Also, okay. it didn't help that my mini was three and a half years old at the time. So it was getting a little slow. And, you know, when you when you get your iPhone 10 plus Pro, It'll be basically the mini size. Yeah. <laughs> seven inch yeah. display. Or no, seven point nine, I think. Yeah. But yeah. I mean that's Eight that's inch, obviously yeah. the phone size you'll use, so that's that's about right. Yeah. <laughs> you know you'll get there. Um well I mean like I've I've pretty consistently had a seven or eight inch tablet for like, you know Is that what the shield is? Whole, yep. Okay. Yeah. It's an eight inch tablet. Um 
And before that, I had the Nexus 7. Yeah, uh, or, or 3. I love sitting in this room because I can just point around and there's the box for the, you know, <laughs> that old thing that I used to, you know, I have a, a bag of Apple boxes in my parents' house. Well, you know where to put them. Um, now, speaking of this iPad Pro 10 and a half inch, uh, of course, we're going to be reviewing that sometime soon on Second Opinion once I get around to sitting Ryan down to talk about it. Yeah. I'm always sitting down. Oh, yeah. I'm never talking now. <laughs> Ryan always has a microphone in front of him. Pretty much. Now, another thing that always has microphones on is the <laughs> Google Home. <laughs> and there are new ones this year. Yes. Oh, wait. One last thing on Apple. Oh, yeah? Speaking of Google Home, that HomePod never was released this December. Oh, right. what yeah. burn. Was it supposed to be this, this yeah. December? Originally, oh. but then they had to push it back Okay. because of mysterious unknown reasons. Hmm. They maybe had to fix Siri. <laughs> Um, or maybe they had to make it actually be useful. Yeah. We'll see. Like, it's really hard for Apple to release a product that's about or just a speaker. It's really hard to release just a speaker. And without some deeper integrations with Siri and its ecosystem, what does it do other than play music maybe from AirPlay? Like, it mm-hmm. can't just do that. Especially when these other products, like the Google Homes we're about to talk about and the Echoes we're about to talk about, do way more. Yeah. 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 So the new Google Homes, uh, there's a couple new first party ones announced this year. Uh, and one of them actually already came out. Uh, the mini is the one that actually came out. Um, and if you ask me, I mean, we will be reviewing this, you know, at some point, but, uh, if you ask me, like, I would say that $50 is probably about the, the right price point for this type of device. And what's interesting about the mini is very often you can find them on sale for even cheaper. Oh yeah. So it's, it's a great little product and it's surprisingly good. And, and like, Google and Amazon were definitely doing all that they could to get as many of these into your homes as they as they possibly could this December. You know, like, they were selling them for, for reduced prices. If you, if you bought other things through their stores, they would, like, throw in a free one, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, I, I have one in my house already. There's another one coming. And, uh, yeah, we were in danger of, of getting another one because... So, so I have one Google Home per floor right now. Yeah. And um, they're they're cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and both, I believe, both Amazon and Google uh, allow third party speaker um, manufacturers to build in their respective uh, assistant. I don't hear too much about that. No, and you wouldn't because like, who who markets smart speakers, right? <laughs> no, nobody. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Sonos. Well, they have their own. That's true, except that Sonos uh, built in Alexa yeah. as a thing, right? Maybe. Yeah, I think Sonos has Alexa. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that that would be the 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 one third party that we that we have heard of that actually promotes that. Um, and and yeah, I mean, like the 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 bigger Google Home Max, um, I I definitely will not be buying one. Um, I don't really see the point of it. That's almost. Google's response to the HomePod. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, and like buying buying a four hundred dollar smart speaker, uh, I just don't see the point when uh, I could just like get a Google Home Mini and like a like some existing speakers, uh, speakers, like the speakers that I have. That Brian just bought and hook up uh, a Chromecast little, audio little to them. Purpose, but yes, it's and pretty close. yeah, and then just tell the Google Home Mini like use these speakers for all of your media playback. There you go. So. Um, Amazon also incorporated some like cameras and screens into their, uh, products. Their, their, yeah, their, their smart home like assistants. Uh, so it's not just, uh, speakers and microphones anymore. It's really weird. So there's three of them this year that are new enough to be relevant. So they, they updated their, the, the cylinder and the puck. Uh huh. Those are new. They're, they're just new. I don't know. But the three new ones are yeah. different and new. So we'll talk about those. Yeah. So there was the look. <laughs> and there's the feel and the <laughs> no <Nope>. and touch <laughs> um, <laughs> smell and taste <laughs> coming next year uh <laughs> so oh. so the, the echo look is a camera and its design uh or its purpose is f- for fashion basically sure it's supposed to help you buy clothes and try clothes on and see what they would look like on you somehow mm-hmm. uh there's the show which is sort of like a uh, an echo with a screen on it and sort of like a tablet shape. Sure. It's, it's like a horizontal tablet fixed position echo. Yeah. It's it's it looks hideous. I don't know how 
a person could condone that design in this period you know, of time. You know what it reminds me of? It, it, it makes me feel like it's the modern equivalent, the contemporary equivalent to the like black and white five inch CRT television oh, on sure. the kitchen counter, yeah. right? You know? It is very much like that, but it's way worse. Yeah. Oh, that looks like crap. <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually looked at the photo. There's so much. Well, here, let me show it to you. You don't have one here. So my issues are. It was a joke on the name. He said, look, I could show. Oh, okay. The bezel is huge. And that like space in the bottom is just proportionally awful. It, 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 it's a hideous design. It's a, it's almost a pointless product. And can you tell me the price since you happen to have it up? Two twenty nine plus for shipping. <laughs> it, it is it is a non excusable amount for what oh, it does. And it looks like the thickest thing you've ever seen too. <laughs> That's like three inches thick. What on the bottom? Ugh. Somebody get, didn't get the memo about like 2017 being the year of the uh, edge shed display. And, so, yeah. so, okay, I had only heard about this device on podcasts. I'd never actually <laughs> taken the time to look at it. Well, then now you've heard it on another podcast. Um, I'm so, talking about it on a podcast. So, so there's another product also, which is called the Amazon Spot. And so this is the screen. That's the round one, right? Yes, this is the round screen. And so this would be sort of like the Google Home Mini, but with a screen on it, if you can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so this one still looks sort of dumb because it's bezels big and it's why uh-huh. is there a screen on this in general? But I think this one's much better stylistically because its screen doesn't look like it came out of a product from 15 years ago. It looks like it's something that could have been made recently. It's kind of like a nest, but instead of being on the okay. wall, it's okay. on your table. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's Amazon for you. Just releasing these Echo products left and right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The spot looks much better. It's, it looks like the, uh, the iMac G4-esque design. Yeah. But 15 years later. Uh, Everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know the speakers? No. Okay. No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Amazon, uh, very strange. I don't know. Did they release any new, other, any other new stuff? Um refreshed on tablets not relevant really they certainly aren't doing anything with the uh, fire phone prime prime Po-po. now is that new this year or that's pretty new or late uh, oh you know maybe. they've really pushed their their own drivers and things mm-hmm. right yeah so that's cool uh let's talk about um, and, well and, and i think that is probably important to bring up because it's like those are kind of the quiet behind the scenes changes that really do change these services mm-hmm. but like it's you know we might not notice and you know they they often let you do the no rush shipping and look you a discount on yeah. some new services so fishing. weird so they've i love it often been for amazon mp3 or uh-huh then amazon food. pantry yeah food and now i've been starting to see like home home servicing so like li- like someone coming in and setting up your internet someone coming in and installing tv things and um, well, that's what i always you know, think housework like mm-hmm. installing like windows like i don't maybe not windows but can they walk my dog can they install like so these other Mac OS these other 10? human based services of doing things because they've also you know this whole last year you can buy some electronic device or get in home installation for yeah. 129 more yeah yeah and I think I've I heard someone did that once and they thought it was just awful so we'll see um I think there there is one other thing related to Amazon that I would like to mention uh is you said Amazon MP3. Uh, and I believe they changed the way that the, the storage options are structured on the Amazon MP3, like, and they're, you know, they're, they're Google drive competitor essentially, um, because you no longer get, I I believe that you no longer get unlimited storage for all of your Mm. MP3 files. That's too bad. Uh, and I only know about this because like I got some email saying like, Hey, you're you're almost over your limit and I'm like, What are what? <laughs> and so I had to like go and look in there and you know, remove a few things that I didn't care about. So so that was the thing. Uh Tesla Model Three is uh released this year. Yeah. They're going places. Yeah. But only two hundred at a time. Right, yeah. <laughs> they're not ramping up yet. They're and you know, they're behind schedule for where they wanted to be for yeah. production. But Quite apparently so. it's you know, in Elon Musk standard time that is um <laughs> but they they seem to be ramping up according to plan just delayed that's mm-hmm. from what i've from what i've heard and they also kind of surprise announced a semi truck yeah with a we, roadster we, inside we, it. we sort of <laughs> we sort of knew that they were going to make one we just didn't know when they were going to announce it right right yeah and i think they're pretty 
competitively priced too. They're you know they're a bit. More I've never expensive. bought a semi truck before. Uh, honestly. Now this is uh, me remembering information I saw two months ago, but I think this truck was like maybe only you know truck might be one hundred twenty thousand dollars, and this was maybe one hundred eighty. Okay, so a bit more, but not loads more. I, I'm also like Ian. I don't know anything about semi trucks. I really don't much either. I know that they really hurt when they hit you from behind. Ooh. I I can understand that. Though. Yeah. I, I can't, but I, I can imagine it. <laughs> uh, you can understand AirPods, though, yeah? Yeah. Now, this is technically 2016, but they came out in, like, December 12th or something of 2016. Mm-hmm. So, AirPods, I love mine. They're, they're like, my favorite accessory I've ever owned. They're fantastic. I would, uh, ooh, Apple Watch or AirPods, I don't know. That's <laughs> uh, top two. Um <laughs> I, I like I really like them so, get, so much. So get rid of your phone. Just have the uh, AirPods and the watch. <laughs> well, oh wait, they wait. That could work, huh, but the yeah. watch needs to sync through a phone to get any media. Right. That's well, true. no, not the cellular one can now stream Apple Music over cellular. Yeah, yeah. So I could. <laughs> and Series Four will be but able to do no, it better. No, actually, the Apple Watch needs to be paired to a phone for any cellular things to work because it's an extension of your phone. Oh yeah, that's goofy. Yeah. Even though like AT and T does give my watch a phone number. I never did try calling it. I you should try it. Well, well I not anymore. anymore. And on the flip side, you can't set up an iPhone without a SIM card. So. Yes. <laughs> but AirPods are fantastic. They're just convenient. They're small. There's They come with a case. They're, their battery lasts quite a while. And mm-hmm. you put in the case, and then they last a long time yeah. again. Um, uh, I, I bought a pair for my parents and my sister, and they've all really liked them a lot. Yep. And yeah, yeah. I highly recommend uh, and we actually reviewed that on second opinion number fifteen. Yes, with Brian and Brandon. That mm-hmm. that number tells you it was a while ago. Yeah. So speaking of that number, actually, uh, shall we talk about a few things on the our state own network? Of the Nexus. Yeah. So this is going to be our little kind of self-indulgent uh, ending to the episode where we talk about our own podcast network and what, what things have gone on over the last year. Um, so when you mentioned actually that uh, you can tell from the number of second opinion that it, that was a while ago, um, the only reason that that actually means anything really is because uh, I kind of forced second opinion and the extra dimension into some like regular scheduling right it's um, almost yeah. good yeah it it used to be that like the extra dimension was anybody on the network could just like make an episode about whatever whenever they wanted to so that was still only and you by the way it was <laughs> for the most part yeah those um, shows have always been your your andrew favorites. andrew made an episode about his trip to berlin one time yeah. um but yeah like i don't think i'd listen to that <laughs> i should look at that that sounds, that sounds fun um but yeah it's 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 it, the the result of that was that nobody ever nobody felt the need to make episodes right and so no episodes were being made on yeah, a regular basis no pressure yeah exactly and so by by forcing myself into the mindset of like okay i want second opinion to come out every two weeks and i want the extra dimension to be every month then you know it kind of lit the fire under my own butt and you know and and i've actually managed to keep up those uh those schedules for the most part um and the result has been that those two shows actually have like a significant download numbers now amazing Uh, yeah it's, it's awesome and they have significant download numbers without having cheated the system yeah, what do you mean by cheating? Well, what have you been doing, Ryan? Well, so that one time when I submitted three shows at once the day before uh, winter yes. break for Apple, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well, you know. And that actually, that was really, really awesome. Like, I don't think we've gotten up to those kinds of no, download numbers per episode uh, since then. Um, but... At least people gave us a, a chance then, right? Yeah, and at least two people re- submitted reviews on uh, on Apple Podcasts. Amazing. Formerly known as iTunes. Um, the other thing, though, that I started doing uh, was I started putting our episodes up on YouTube. And 2017 was the first full year that those were all, you know, available there. Day one, you know, like the same amount of time as, as the MP3 feed, you know. How many... Um... Takedown notices have you gotten? Um, we had a couple of like really old Nexus special episodes, you know, where like Sam was uh, playing some trailer for some movie or whatever. And, you know, those ones are, I was, I was like, yeah, okay, like 
those that's legit yeah. <laughs> but um for the most part no we haven't had any uh copyright notices because it's mostly just us talking oh so. mm-hmm. good thing we don't do atn anymore <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I've, I've learned a few things from, from that process. Uh, and number one thing that I learned is, um, the benefit of, of putting these on YouTube is like getting the episodes in front of people who aren't already subscribed to the shows. Right. And the shows that, um, benefit the most from this are the ones that have actually searchable names you know like the titles are searchable right, right. and and you know they're talking about stuff that have you know some broad appeal so second opinion has benefited the most um because like people search for reviews of things right um in particular like we managed to get the um apple watch series three review up in a timely manner yeah. and you know got got you know at the f- at least 100 hits off of that, you know, in the first 28 days or whatever. Um, Google Wi-Fi review has had, like, a long tail uh, of people finding it on on YouTube. Um, shows like uh, PodKit and Control Structure benefit significantly less <laughs> from YouTube because the titles of those shows are based on, like, a funny thing that we said. Totally meaningless. Yeah. Um, and the, like, description uh, is not quite as useful for knowing what is the content inside the episode and that and that gets to a bigger larger issue in podcasting in general that like it's really hard for like these you know for the apple podcast directory and for you to and you know for all of these places to kind of understand what is in these shows you can't really do analytics on audio very easily and getting metadata and parsing well, through. You can you can try. You but can't it's... do analytics on a on a decentralized system. I think is the issue, right? Because like you, yeah, when you submit it to places, and, you know. like I I have been looking at the analytics of the YouTube videos, and I have gotten some very good insights from that. For example, we were talking about the episode the the review of the AirPods, right? I noticed that there was a sharp decline in people listening to that episode as soon as the two of you started talking about like, well, let's let's compare the AirPods to other Bluetooth earbuds. Yep literally everybody stopped listening right then and i was like oh that's a good lesson to, to learn yeah um so about 10 minutes ago everybody stopped listening pretty much yeah. yeah um but you know the people who are still here are the the true true believers we are the How's we that? are the the core listeners of the network too <laughs> yeah that's, that's very true so i think i think that's really interesting and now often when i'm on youtube i always imagine that that uh that fall off graph mm-hmm. whenever i close a video i love that yeah yeah right um and I and I actually uh, gathered up a few of those lessons that I just mentioned from uh, from YouTube um, and and put those into a Medium post. Um, and actually, since uh, Medium went from being like totally free to like having that uh, the the weird price like yes thingy, um, I that was like the one post that I was like, all right, I'll I'll just like put that as a paid one and see what happens and i've gotten more hits on that one since then so so if, if there's any paid medium posts out there mm-hmm. i close it immediately and blacklisted i haven't i haven't encountered any paid medium posts yet so yeah me neither because yeah. they're just dumb. yours <laughs> i don't know i haven't looked around to find them can't so. I, I i i hope medium closes maybe we need a, to put a blog on the new nexus cms no <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it'd be too bad we'll just make a github pages thing and, and yes. incorporate it in Whatever ninety nine percent invisible is doing, that's what we should do. I don't know. No, just put them on, a, on my website because I already have support for multiple authors. It's just, <laughs> I, I would, I'm the only one who's <laughs> written anything. I would just do a Gatsby site or something, uh, uh, and it's on my domain. <laughs> so we also have started uh, broadcasting some of our episodes on the Frogtown Community Radio Station. I pitched Ooh. I pitched the extra dimension to them as like, hey, you guys don't really have any like technology focused stuff. Would you like a and they're technology like, show? Okay, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, and I love it because like I don't have to do that much extra work. Um, I did do a little bit of of rethinking and you know like considering. Okay, so like podcast listeners, I can reasonably assume that they you know if they miss something, they can like back it up and you know listen to it again or whatever. Radio listeners, of course, cannot do that. So like you know I I make sure to like plug the show notes website you know URL every like 20 minutes or so in the episode yada yada. Um, and so that's like small modifications that I have to do to the. Yeah. 
So I remember on your so. first broadcast, yeah. I I, um, I, didn't, I don't have a lot of radios around here. Right. So I took my mom's Moto G5 or something, and mm-hmm. it has a built-in radio. Yep. And so I listened to the show on, on her phone with the radio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I tried to stream it somewhere because mm-hmm. I'm too far from Frogtown. Yeah. Really? In, in South Minneapolis. Oh, okay. It is a low-powered uh, FM station. I'm, so. I'm, I'm assuming I'm too far at least. I don't know. I don't. Oh, wait. Oh, that's that's hard my, to believe. Oh wait, hold on. My iPod Nano fifth gen with a camera <laughs> has a FM radio. That's my only that's radio so I own, so other than my car. But I don't use that for radio. Another thing that I've started doing for episodes uh, is actually like gathering timestamps for when we like talk about different subjects. Um, and now that I said that, I turn around and look at Audacity and realize <laughs> that I haven't been doing that at all this episode. And, uh, you know, I'm so disappointed in myself. Don't worry about it. Um, I think I'm not going to. if we do timestamps for, like, like, you know, general things. So, like, in PodKit, I've been trying to do timestamps or chapters. Mm-hmm. Um, and I generally do I, – well, I did intro, new Twitter followees. And uh, topics. Contacts. And then I did – well – I, I did specific topics. So I did, oh, yeah. We, I mean, we only talked about like three things, four yeah. things about last episode. So it wasn't too much. So I just yeah. did, 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 and that was it. Um, so in this show, like this, there's about, talk about four much. segments. So this sure. this would be like, like this episode, for example, would be news, products, state of the nexus. Yeah, sure. And then contact us or, or something. Yep. And that'd be all. And that's probably fine for the most part. Yep. Um, And yeah, and that, and that kind of thing, Um, it's kind of... It's easy to see why it's useful for a listener, right? Because, you know, if they remember like, oh, yeah, there was this one segment that they talked about, you know, it'd be very, very useful for them to just be able to click a button and go to that timestamp. Um, it's hard to know how many people are actually using that, you know? It's part um, of the decentralized medium of yep, podcasting. Yep. Um, but I can tell you that it has been very useful for me as somebody who's creating these podcasts because, uh, for example, on YouTube, right, um, having an hour plus long episodes it's like okay i would like to have like two or three ad breaks in there right. and being able to put those ad breaks into reasonable places boom like that that makes me feel a hundred percent better about the product that we're putting out into mm-hmm. the world you know yeah. um i hate watching like you know really long stuff from rooster teeth where it's like oh there's an ad break every 30 seconds no matter what's going on in the video it's just or not 30 seconds sorry 30 minutes you know it's like oh, did you guys put no effort into that Dynamic yes. ad insertion. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, and then also, you know, of course, um, knowing where are reasonable places to put, like, radio reads of, you right. know, go to this URL to see the show notes, etc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's, like, the stuff that's been going on over the last year on the network. Yep. What do we got coming up in the future? Almost nothing. CMS... Version three, maybe. Well, that that's that's been under development for the last over a year. Yeah, well, the last two years, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So maybe. <laughs> uh, it's been. That's all I'm gonna say. Maybe. What kind of stuff can would we want to have in CMS through version three? Everything we have yes. now, just not just, with WordPress. Just better. I don't even need um, better. At some this ideas point. that I've been thinking about and I've talked about a little. His bit. His ideas are thinking. way. <laughs> like that scope creep. That's not even funny. But go on. It's all front end things, though. Sure, it is for the most part. <laughs> I just have to upload it an, uh, an MP3, and then you upload it to S3 or something. Me being the UI, you being the everything else. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, a, a chapter editor for uh, the browser, so you can click here. This mm-hmm. is this chapter. Click there. This is that chapter. Now, it, it, then that would be a common place that we can do metadata for all of the podcasts without needing to come up with different workflows per person. Yeah. I know you guys use Audacity. I use Logic Pro. Mm-hmm. And then I also use Audacity for truncation. But Which that's so weird. That in its own... How does Logic Pro not have truncation? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It doesn't. And I'm trying to... I try to do a, I try to do a command line thing to do it, but it, it wasn't super reliable, <laughs> and it's very difficult to configure. Mm-hmm. And Audacity's is just... Easy. easy. Yeah. Um. So, you know, uh, the last podcast, for example, I exported from logic with markers that had titles as a wave file because wave files can do chapters um, <laughs> okay if cannot mm. and then i imported to marco Arment's forecast app which <laughs> takes the chapters uh-huh. parallel encodes the mp3 which is actually just chopping up the file into multiple bits and running i would i would i want that can i have a bunch that? of times in a row. i want that on windows give it to me right you can probably script it i, I can't um i can't and then 
I ran it through our own Python tool to add metadata. So it's just like all these steps, and that <laughs> and that didn't even truncate it. What I could have done was do it, edit in Logic, export to Wave, import to Audacity, <laughs> truncate, export again, import to Logic, add chapters, export to Forecast and code, run through our metadata, then upload to S3. Do you do you use the uploader to upload to S3 too? I do. Okay, good. Just checking. So. <laughs> That's a workflow that I would like to to streamline a little more and make it more yeah. consistent for everyone. So in my professional opinion, which is very professional, uh, that is not a part of the scope of V3 CMS. No, it's, it's not. Separate. It's it's a separate feature that I'm just trying I'm just thinking about. Oh, I know. I, I understand. Do you think we'd be able to uh, incorporate MP3 chapters somehow into the CMS version 3? Define like meaning. like like have it like Obviously, MP3 chapters usually are applicable once you have downloaded the MP3 into your podcast player of choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if people are listening via our website, being able to have those like markers, yes, that could be done. It would just if you if if you were able to supply a list of timestamps, it can do it. Yeah, yeah. Or or just finding a web player that supports MP3 chapters. Yeah, Yeah. that's that's not a big deal. Yeah, cool. Yeah, there are players out there. I can do that. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to write my own too. Yeah, <laughs> just this guy doesn't understand scope creep. So it just it's a fun challenge. I I it's, understand it's fun not... challenge, but well, I've been staring this horrible thing in the face for two years. <laughs> I don't want a challenge. I want to get it done. Well, well but I no. also don't want to do it. It's it's the it's a fun thing to do after we build it the initial. Uh, that's it's what, that's version, what they all say. Three point one, three point two. You know. Yeah. yeah. There's a few other like content side plans that i have for network stuff um we still need to get enthusiastic about everything started with, our, with our good friend brandon johnson i was gonna say brandon mitchell i, <laughs> I think that was idea was seated in 2015 it, it might have been but it's an amazing show and he's he is enthusiastic about everything so mm-hmm. he even recorded a a, a, sne- a sneaky five minute episode but <laughs> Did he? i don't know if it exists was that the spectacle one it, no, it was the one about coffee. Oh, right. Wasn't it? Oh, boy. <laughs> Nitro. I think he recorded it on his voicemail was app on his phone. I'm just Probably. like, I'm so excited about the idea of a micro podcast, you know, that is like so, forced to be four or five minutes so, long. So I would totally, uh, I mean, we could all just like be walking and just do it on our phone. Like, I just saw the would, coolest thing. Let me just ramble about it. Mm-hmm. Rah, 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 rah. So actually, also find me on Twitter. That, that brings on. up a great point. I actually am very entertained by those ideas. Um, and there's a bunch of programming podcasts that are three to five minutes long that are just like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and with the new CMS, uh, um, it will be able to support that at a better level because you'll be able to tell it, well, this is a short show, so it won't go into the normal, you know, villain slash hero rotation oh, of, okay. of content. It'll go down somewhere else on a smaller carousel or something, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you can add more flags to tell the the system, like, what is the data here? Yeah. Yeah. One day. Speaking of having things go into different carousels, uh, another thing that I'm planning is uh, recording an audiobook. Because um, earlier in 2017, I read a, a a book called "Robots Will Steal Your Job," but that's okay. And uh, and I did that as research for an extra dimension episode. Um, and then you know was looking around later on, and I've started listening to audiobooks now, and uh, and and I realized that there's no audiobook for that book, but that book was released under Creative Commons license. So I'm like, hey. Why not? I don't have enough projects going on. Not at all. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm, we could add support in our CMS for audiobooks. Right. I mean, you could. And I, I wouldn't mean, do that, but you no, could. Yeah. I, don't, I think that's scope creeping. I mean, it's, it's, it's not something that you really need to change, I think, from a CMS standpoint. We, you know, because like... Um, but the length is like an order of magnitude longer. Define length. Well, no. So, so I'll... Time so, what I'm planning episode. is... Um, doing oh, right. releasing this as a podcast each chapter of the book is its oh, own right. episode okay, yeah. um checking the box for for apple podcasts episodic instead of serialized right, right? right yeah. um and uh and then you know using mp3 chapters for different sections that are within each one of those yeah. book chapters um taking into account a few things such as uh you know like a a a Ideally, when you're listening to an audiobook, you want to just go flow from one chapter to another, you know. But like when you're when you've got a podcast, typically you have like an intro and an outro and stuff. Yeah, it'd um, be different. But like you know, I'll take I'll kind of do a middle ground where like uh, I'll make sure that the intro and outro are the exact same length every single time, so that right. people who have fancy podcast players 
or you exactly can just like 30 skip, seconds. Yeah, exactly. Can just skip the first 30 seconds of the episode, stuff like that. Um, is this uh, Creative Commons attribution non commercial or with? I believe it's non commercial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so, of course, you know, like any versions that we put on YouTube, we just need to not put advertisements on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I wonder how that works. Like, if the website ever had ads, which it won't ever have ads, right? What would that mean? That would mean that any pages where we serve that audiobook wouldn't be able to have ads. Do you think so? Is that what it means? But yeah. what if it in its own is an ad for the rest of the Nexus? That's fine. Because nobody's paying us. Wait, so what, what if we don't make money, but somebody else makes money? What? Off that page view. What if we make money off of the other pages that they that they listen to that audiobook? I don't know, I don't know where he's going with this, but... I feel like in order to suss this out, we need to go and listen to the Extra Dimension episode about copyright law. Because <laughs> something suspicious about that, because like I get YouTube, but that's because it's embedded into the video. Mm-hmm. But if it's embedded into the page, it has nothing to do with the audio. Like it's weird to me. Right. Except that I consider the audio I know what you and, consider, but... and the show notes to be, you know, the same two parts of the same work. I you don't. know what I mean? Um which is why I always encourage people to go and list, listen or look at the uh, show notes at uh, the nexus.tv slash NS57. I agree with you. You should look at the show notes at the nexus.tv slash NS57. <laughs> Wait, have you checked uh, the show notes at the nexus.tv slash NS57? No, I haven't yet. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of like the audiobook itself being like an advertisement for the rest of the Nexus, um, I have thought about like the fact that despite all of our the fact that all of our uh episodes are like very clearly hosted on the same website you know we are like a group of five people who make you know podcasts and like you know we're we're like (laughs) we're always like talking to each other we're on each other's shows and stuff you know there isn't a whole lot of like cross promotion that goes on um aside from like occasional times where like the extra dimension and second opinion will be like doing the same kind of you know subject a related subject at the same time and you know so i've been thinking about like do we need to have kind of short little promotionals made for our various different shows and like pop those up at the ends of episodes kind of you know maximum fun style or something like that yeah i think that's fine could be good at the end of a show is fine Mm -hmm. if people don't hear it who cares it's fine no loss um i classically end all the shows i edit with absolutely nothing it just stops (laughs) (laughs) yeah oh at least you do have uh the theme song. Oh, speaking of theme song, I really want to go and like collect all of the theme songs that we've ever used and like make a YouTube playlist of all of them. That that'll be fun. That's tough. Yeah, I'll do it. I, you know, it's I don't have enough projects going, Ryan. <laughs> I have I don't have the podcast theme stored anywhere centrally. Like I think I do. Sometimes I pull the the like AIF exported version from Logic. Sometimes I pull the like AAC. <laughs> Like I think That's I so once, weird. I think I once downloaded it from SoundCloud. Because <laughs> it's funny because Brian made that theme. Yeah. 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 No, I, I don't know. Does it this this uh, Nexus Special have dedicated music yet? Ever? No, Nexus Special has never had dedicated okay. music. By Do you design. want me to make some dedicated music for if anything? Uh, um. Well, I feel like Nexus uh, Special uh, is just, good to not. I think you know, enthusiastic about everything should have the hypiest song. Oh heck yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll try. I'll try something cool. There. So what I always do is I just go to the YouTube uh, music store and yeah. get something. Mm-hmm. Um, That's right. And then of course, in order to like attract more people to the network, hopefully, uh, I've been thinking about the like we should probably do more crossovers and team ups with other like podcasters. Um, and of course, like finding or more guests. Yeah, outside of mm-hmm. the five of us. Yeah, yeah, he started doing that more. Yeah, yeah, yeah for second opinion especially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you did a lot for eight bit sort of yeah well so the, the the guests we had on 8-bit were for the same reason uh that we have guests on second opinion because i can't review all of the video yeah. games right exactly <laughs> and i well, can't that's a good, review all a good the reason to bring someone on yeah 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 and, it's it's harder so like I, I really wanted to do guests and stuff with atn but it's hard to to bring in a guest but then subject them to to matt so <laughs> um yeah. you know i've given at least one of our guests the bug you know, Aaron finished uh, recording that episode, and he was like, "Oh, that was so much fun! I want to do more podcasts." I know. <laughs> so, so Aaron yeah. is one of my coworkers at uh, at a uh, software development uh, place, mm-hmm. and um, so he's been asking me and on Twitter like recommendations for mics and mixers, and you know what oh, really? to do yeah. and how to do yeah. things. And so he's uh, uh, like an off road biker, yeah, like off road bicycle yes. biking in the cyclist, 
in but the he, forest, BMX? Yeah, in the forest, yeah. We just struggled with this exact same thing on the Extra Dimension number 13 when we talked about bicycling. Well, when I see a biker on the street, it's yeah. either a motorcycle yeah. person or it's a person riding their bike. Right. Those A bike is not a motorcycle, in my opinion. Correct. Right, but it depends who you talk to. Well, right, exactly, and so like I have to make myself clear every time I do this because it's weird and I don't get it. I think for that episode we had to say cycling. Yes, we did. It's so so strange. <laughs> so yeah, so Aaron um, is actually going to make a great show about um, kind of his thoughts, but also sort of like doing off road biking stuff. Mm-hmm. Cool. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, he's also part of an organization, and I imagine people from the organization will uh, participate. So yeah. he's going to get a nice little mixer and. Set it up. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. I'm hoping that, like, um, for the extra dimension, uh, I'll be able to find some more people who are, like, kind of. <laughs> every, every device plunks at once. You know how it is. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, Make it be quiet. <laughs> um, I'm hoping for the extra dimension that I'll be able to, like, find some more kind of experts in their field type it's very difficult uh yeah guests um and that and i and i'm hoping that'll be doable for the extra dimension because the extra dimension is less frequent right you know and so it's like oh we're doing uh, an episode about theater and how technology integrates with theater right i'll go and interview some of the theater people that i'm working with right now take a road trip to morris to interview all of our professors about whatever they're doing research on yeah exactly um leverage some of those connections you know i always wanted to do that with people at the u but I still don't. I don't think people at the you get it. Like, there's there's no like the 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 level of responsibilities they already have is like too high, and they don't <laughs> want to even think about doing more of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But yeah, should be fun. Got a year coming up. <laughs> yeah, <let's, laughs> twenty eighteen. We'll uh, see what we year. get done. Yep, yep. So for fun, let me just uh, type into the Nexus TV here. Um, how many episodes we've actually we actually have oh in total yeah so right now we have 1034 is that including the fringe that is including total okay (laughs) that's what total (laughs) means um that's amazing i um i think when i went to work at doherty a Mm -hmm. couple years ago i think we were at 650 or so Mm -hmm. um and that's it's amazing we've grown yeah that much yep yep yeah and i'm hoping like um for some reason the universe still only has 21 episodes (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um like yeah and we've transitioned uh i think podkit from a like weekly to in- bi-weekly to <laughs> monthly to every to two quarterly months to, to quarterly to monthly yeah and uh this <laughs> last this last one was seven weeks six one, one, seven one weeks. 1.5 months it's fine yeah. uh, if we're gonna get back on schedule we have to record one in two a weeks. week and a half okay. yeah uh, that's not actually undoable. That's fine. Control structure used to be our like tried and true fortnightly uh, show, and uh, and I think that one's been do- going kind of monthly more recently. So Fair. it's yeah, um, yeah. It feels it feels weird that the extra dimension and second opinion are like the most steady ones right now. So so when, what I imagined when 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 we started the network was that you know of course you know we're busy college students so, you know this is going to be a every other week kind of thing because mm-hmm. like who has time for this nonsense. Um, ATN was good enough to do weekly when I actually had a participant, but it's too hard to do shows if you don't have somebody else with you. Right. Uh, and of course, Ian does all the work now, so it's wonderful. Um, you know, yeah, free advertising or something, I guess. Um, <laughs> and and it's just it's a lot easier to do it all in person too. Like right. You you have the studio be. for ATN most of the time. Like for for podcast, it's we record and then it's wait an hour for all the files to get dropped on my server, <laughs> and then I can download and start editing. Yeah. And then it takes me half an hour to get it all imported, set up, synced, and then I can export the fringe, and then I start editing the podcast. Yeah. And then, like, I don't think I go to bed before one a.m. Whenever I edit podcast. Well, so so I can I can since I don't edit the show, I can often get these out within forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I don't edit the show. I spend like two hours per hour. Yeah, and editing, for those probably. ones, you definitely don't get um timestamps happening. No, in there, never. So, yeah, and I don't even do a super tight job. I mostly like am remembering all the times I think I messed up, and then I'm, I'm fixing up my <laughs> things. Or occasionally, when when Brandon is in a ten second mumble, then I'll, I'll clean that up. <laughs> I do that every so often. Ryan, ten, ten second mumble or ten second cut off? Who knows? I think Ryan, my you have favorite... pretty good speaking. I think you you're. 
think things out. I have done this for 1,034 podcasts. I better know what I'm doing. And I feel like I'm trying to improve, but it's so it's still difficult I, I will mention further that so so at work i actually um am, am the primary speaker of most of the teams i'm on mm. and when i applied to doherty and by applied i mean they found me somewhere in a hole um <laughs> they uh you know they asked me like so how do you like speaking and i'm like well i've recorded like 500 podcasts i think i'm okay yeah 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 it's fun i love talking I, yeah call me back in two months <laughs> you want that <laughs> Well, on in two months? Nothing. That's when the next show is. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, uh, for those, you know, 1.5 listeners who have made it this far into the episode, <laughs> well, where can people find you guys on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at RandomR, and of course on my website, RandomRampersay.com, and also the Nexus.tv. You can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at BrianMitchL, and on the Nexus.tv. <laughs> I'm Ian Arbuck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian Arbuck and my website, ianarbuck.com, and on the nexus.tv. Have a good one. See you next year. Watch out for cars. Like, so. Cost doesn't matter. Not really, not anymore. Like, I can just buy one and it's fine. But the problem is, they all suck. Okay. So, ideally, it would... Welcome to the fringe. Okay, hold on. I gotta gotta do mine. There you go. Good old days. I hate this show. (laughs) (laughs) I messed up slurping and I, like, almost spit it out. (laughs) I messed up slurping. (laughs) Now, there's a fringe title for the show. I don't even have docs Oh, fantastic. Yeah, wait, do we have... uh... Oh, wait, I need to open up... We have docs. Yeah, we do. I just realized that we're all Brian Rampersad in here, aren't we? <laughs> it's funny. It happens more than you know to many people. I mean... It- <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> and this is why Ian doesn't drink carbonated beverages. This is why I give it to him every time. <laughs> I, oh, think, I think I'll actually promote this fringe on Twitter. <laughs> this is a pretty good fringe, I think. There's always something a little bit different about... Um, well, for one, Brandon isn't here, and I was about to say React isn't here, so there's that. <laughs> and then the other thing that's important is that we're all here in person, and so there's yeah. just in something. In person helps a lot. It makes it more entertaining. Yeah. Also, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I bought trash bags on March 3rd. <laughs> that's oh, something that happened. Tune in next week to find out what I bought on Amazon this year. <laughs> that's uh, uh... Meltdown Lake. <laughs> <laughs> I cuss a crawl all day. <laughs> but all day are all capitalized. Just because I hit the caps lock <laughs> instead of the A. Yeah, you know, as long as I still have my food. And then the wild pack of Ian's will just come out running after them. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've given it. Okay. okay, so I'm going to stop this. Bye, friend. Bye, friend. No one will probably ever hear this. If you yeah. do, please tweet at me and Ian. Or any or or Ryan or the Nexus TV account. What's I, their what's their hashtag? Goodbye.